Aula. Seven more months. So glad to have you back, Yanti. Oh my gosh! All you nerds are here! Hi! Jesus, you guys got here so fast! <laughs> Everybody, welcome back. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's nice to be streaming again. But I am I am sleepy bitch as usual. You know, the usual of 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 waking up at 9 a.m. and still yawning for the rest of the day. Come on. Yeehaw. <laughs> Yeehaw. <laughs> Thank you so much for getting five tier one subs. <laughs> Thank you. And thank you everybody else. Oh my gosh. Hold on. Fucking Christ. Christ. Christ and stick. Uh, 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 first, Kyle, thank you for, uh, subbing tier two. <laughs> S-I-M-P. <laughs> Noah, thank you so much for subscribing at tier one. His Thea, thank you also for subscribing at tier one. And, um, 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 Rackin, thank you for subscribing with Brian. And, um... Looks like Pellucci, Tyson, Monica, uh, Sakurano, and Rini all got subs from Kyle. Say thank you to Kyle. Thank you, Kyle. <laughs> Shrimp. <laughs> all right. So we're back. Um, we're going back to the usual schedule. Shut up. Shut. Silence. Tiny notifications. <laughs> We're going back to our usual schedule Monday through Thursday at 3 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. And um, I'm pretty excited. I'm pretty excited to be back. Feeling feeling pretty good. Feeling well rested for the most part. <laughs> and uh, I thought we could start off with a fucking cool ass game by a really cool uh, VTuber, um, uh, Mado Cactus. Um, she made this like whole game, I think, in like one year or less, probably less actually. Um, and she managed to finish it just in time for the new year. And I've been so excited to play this game. You don't understand. <laughs> it's a visual novel, obviously, but um, it's fucking sick. The character designs so cool. Um, look at this opening screen. It has parallaxing on it. I didn't even know you could do that in Renpy. So I'm I'm just I'm really excited. Hope y'all are excited. Um I just came to sub and celebrate the return. Time to play games, so have fun. Thank you for coming. Bye, Ragged. I love you so much. Enjoy your games. Hi, Nightosphere. Hello, hello, welcome in. We just started. Oh my gosh, I am I am pumped. I'm ready. I don't know what to expect with this game. All I know is that it's like not like they don't I don't think they call it like a nunnery, but it's it's obviously got some like nunnery themes going on here and whoever this main character is 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 doing some stuff that she shouldn't be doing. And that's about it. That's all I know. This game is $10 on itch.io itch.io and hold on, let me link uh Mato Cactus's Twitter really quick because she's wonderful, very talented, very cool. And you should all go check her out because she's also a VTuber and anybody who can make a game in like a year. <laughs> I I respect immensely. So we're gonna go ahead and get loaded in. Yeah, it does look spoopy. Looks very spoopy. Start. All right. 
clear my throat. <laughs> so, um, what do you think of my thumbnails, I mean? Hand it over to me and I'll take a look. Dot, 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 dot. Hmm. Well, it sucks. <laughs> I will be lurking, but I hope you have fun. Okay, thank you so much for the lurk, Nightosphere. I think this composition is pretty strong. You've come a long way in just under a year, Magna. Magda, Magda, goodness. R really? Mm-hmm. With time and effort, you could turn this into a gorgeous piece. Thank you. That's, um, my favorite of the bunch, too. I was looking through some references in the studio, and I found a pattern known as the Tree of Life. I thought it would be appropriate. Since, um, the Haven is a sanctuary. I can definitely see that. Excellent choice of theme, Magda. Okay, so our girl's an artist, too? All right. All right. One suggestion, though. On God, throw something is still 5k. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. Is it really? Hold on. Let me... <laughs> Hold on. I'll fix that for you. God, I totally forgot. That... <laughs> I totally forgot that I had put that on uh, fucking 5k. My bad. Um, There it is. We will pop it back down. What was it before? 500? I think it was 500. Yeah, that was five. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was 500. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. <clears throat> Thanks. <laughs> oh, it was 250? Eh, too bad. It's 500 now. Yes? You may want to you may want to spread out where you put the birds. If you do that, then the composition will guide your eyes all across the tree. Rather than to specific sections of it. Uh, I guess that makes sense. So, are you ready to start working on your first solo piece? <gasps> Hi Dogger Bear! Hello! I'm gonna mute now. Uh gotta keep working on school stuff. Have fun. Okay. Thank you for lurking. Oh, I'd be more than happy to... Oh, da bell. Maria? Magda, it's assembly time. Ah, right. You, you bitches, can I read? <laughs> can I read, please? Assembly time. It's time for assembly. We're gonna go and have snacks. And we're going to talk about um, the sins we've committed. I'll go first. I woke up today. <laughs> uh, you may now that I leave to go join some NVM. Whatever that is. Have fun. <laughs> Bye, Kyle. <laughs> Throw things is my favorite action. I'm sorry, but howdy. It's okay. I forgive you, I guess. <clears throat> my name is Magda. Just Magda. I'm a girl. I'm 19 years old. I live in the Haven. And it's a place on an island in the middle of a giant lake. Interesting. Beyond the lake lies dangerous lands. There, people are corrupt. They kill. They steal. They plunder. They lust and poison and lie for the pettiest of reasons. We would never, ever do that here. <laughs> in other words... They're insane. <laughs> but the Haven is different. Our leader, Lady Amaris, says that those who live here are pure of heart and mind. I'm very lucky. Instead of growing up in a decaying, violent world, I spent my day surrounded by beautiful forests and good people. There's just one catch. We need to stay pure. If we don't, well... That's what the Apologia assemblies are for. What if you never do anything wrong ever? <laughs> what if you just walk in and be like, I have not committed any sins today. I can leave. 
<lacht> Hi, Bice. Oh. oh, whoa. Gratchy little chair scooting sound. I like the background style. It's very interesting. The bell rings. An assembly is about to begin. Everyone is expected to come. It's a haven-wide event, after all. And so me, Maria, and all the other members of the art sect make our way to the assembly building. Usually, assemblies don't bother Maria, but today, she looks really, really uncomfortable. Not because the assembly is about her, though. Maria's a sect head. She fosters a special- I- I foresee myself mispronouncing these things. I'm gonna have to work really hard to say sect to with a T at the end. It's gonna be really difficult. Oh, high school romance visual novel? Um, not quite. <laughs> I don't I don't think there's any romance in this game, actually. Um, upon further reading, um I mean, maybe. May, I have no idea, but I don't think that's, uh, <laughs> I think this is more about, um, getting my ass beat for, uh, thinking horny thoughts about Bloodhound from Apex Legends, probably. <clears throat> she fosters a special, special level of trust with Lady Amorous and receives privileges for her loyalty. No, Maria dreads this assembly because this assembly will be about her best friend, Jail. Jail? 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 Jail. We're gonna go with jail. <laughs> An important message. I know, right? No being horny. Horny is not allowed. Everyone knew that jail would get into trouble sooner or later. Apparently, she shirked her duties as a member of the research sect. Instead of determining whether foreign books, movies, and art were safe for the Haven to see, jail's curiosity betrayed her and somehow... Oh, betrayed her somehow. I don't know much else. But since she's the center of today's assembly, she must have done something pretty terrible. Eventually, me and the rest of the art sect reach the assembly building. It's a tall, imposing structure and one of the oldest buildings in the Haven. It sticks out like a jagged nail from the surrounding reeds. To be frank, I've grown to hate it. But to the Haven's members, assemblies are like swallowing cod liver oil. They're uncomfortable in the moment, but good for our minds overall. The entrance is crowded with girls from other sects. Like ants to an anthill, we all march in, single file. God, this is- this- God. <laughs> just like church. This is literally just like church. Just an immense discomfort. <laughs> Once I get inside, I find a pew at the very back of the room to sit in. I don't really want front row seats for this. It's best for me to stay as quiet and as hidden as possible. Looking around the ha hall, I spot Maria in a row adjacent to mine. Seems like she had the same idea. I hope she'll get out of this okay. I'm very concerned. I feel like we're about to go from like zero to a hundred. <laughs> Suddenly, the speakers crackle overhead. There's three taps. Then, a familiar cold voice comes through. Everyone, please settle down. The Apologia Assembly is about to begin. The room goes quiet. Everyone turns towards the voice's source, a chubby, bespectable, bespe be bespectacled young woman. Without a discernible expression, she stands on the stage in the back of the room. The head of the research sect, Eve. Ugh. If she's leading this assembly, Jail's definitely going to have a rough time. She's gonna get her ass beat! Behind her stands Lady Amorous and a certain member of the writing sect. My body suddenly breaks out into a cold sweat. I look away. Oh god, not her as well. This is just, we're just having a terrible day today. With both Eve and Cerise on stage, this assembly is going to be brutal. What? What are they gonna do? I'm scared. <laughs> Good. We have peace and quiet. Let's get right to the matter at hand. Jail of the research sect. If you could come to the stage, please. There's no response. 
With an impatient cough, Eve taps the microphone on the stage's podium. Jail, I'd appreciate it if you could make this easier for all of us. Don't make me use force. Another pause. Then, I hear footsteps. Everyone's eyes turn towards an average-looking redhead, reluctantly coming forward to the stage front. Smooth. Ah, so that's what Jail looks like. This is the first time I've seen her. Aside from Eve, I don't know many members of the research sect. Once Jail makes her way onto stage, onto the stage at the back of the room, Eve gives her a quick nod. Thank you for cooperating. Shall we begin? Jail doesn't respond. Instead, she gazes down at the wooden floor and frowns. I'll take that as a yes. We're gonna beat her. <laughs> Uh-oh. We are gathered here today to judge Jail of the research sect for the harm she's brought to our community. According to significant evidence, she smuggled illegal foreign media into the Haven. Books, illustrations, movies. How dare you watch Inuyasha in these hollowed halls? All unvetted by her own research sect. All extremely dangerous in content. You get the idea. She did this, knowing full well that her actions could have caused her or her fellow Haven members to go insane. Lady Amorous, what would you like to say about this? Eat shit and die. <laughs> Miss Jail was led by her curiosity. When exercised with prudence, moderation, and in service to noble causes, curiosity is a beautiful virtue. Yet, unrestrained, curiosity is a thing to be feared. Indeed, it could be called a dangerous excess. Jail fell prey to this untempered excess. Because of her curiosity, our entire community was put at risk. Naturally, we cannot behave leniently to, 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 towards, ugh, towards her. I swear, I know how to read. It's just been a while. Thank you for your wise words, Lady Amorous. Before we continue, I'd also like to thank another member of the Haven for contributing vital evidence. Oh, I love the art style. I know, right? Maddo's art style is, oh, just chef's kiss. Please show your appreciation for Cerise of the writing sect. This necessary assembly would not be possible without her loyalty and service to the Haven. Snitches get stitches. I hope we get to beat her up. <laughs> the audience bursts into applause as the woman behind Lady Amorous steps forward to take a bow. A tall blonde with a powerful frame. I tried to ignore her by looking down at my lap. Compared to everyone else's loud claps, mine are small and nearly silent. Not clapping would raise suspicion against me. Thanks, everyone. I really appreciate the response here. It took a lot of work unearthing this case. Uh, but I think the cat's out of the bag now. You know, because curiosity killed the cat and all. <laughs> You're so funny. There's a well-timed burst of laughter that follows Cerise's remark. Probably canned to humor her. Anyhow, what are we going to do with this troublemaker, huh? Good question. We could make her clean the dorm bathrooms for a month with her toothbrush. Or we could force her to eat alone during mealtimes after everyone else has left. Or we could make her, organize, make her organize the research sect archives. <laughs> you got auto modded. <laughs> I'll allow it, cause I agree. I hope she gets hit by a bus. <laughs> like the ones that haven't been touched for 15 years. Or, oh, but then what would be the point of this assembly? She just put us all in a lot of danger. I wouldn't be, it wouldn't be fair to just have her scrub a few toilets and let her off scot-free. I mean, foreign materials, tricky stuff. If it hadn't been checked beforehand, you never know what it could do to your brain. And the stuff Jail was hoarding, 
Well, I saw it with my own eyes. It was real gross freak shit. <laughs> Me too. Me too, Jill. Me too. Um, I feel so bad for her right now. Do we really want someone, want to keep someone like that in our community? Huh? I didn't think so. So, Jill, let me tell you what's going to happen next. From here on out, you're no longer a member of the Haven. Ooh. Ooh, she got you can't sit with us. No Naruto in Bible school, but you can cuss on stage. Yeah, literally. Literally, what the fuck? <laughs> Can't watch anime, but you sure as hell can cuss in front of the entire school assembly. <laughs> Uh-oh. I think this means we kill her. Are you implying that? Yes, Jail. You'll be taken away. Definitely not murdered. We don't do murder here. Uh, we're better than that. Totally. <laughs> Catholics be like that? Yeah, literally. <laughs> Weird. Wait, if that's the case, then what's going to happen to me? Where will I go now? Can I say goodbye to my friends? You're no longer part of the Haven. You don't deserve answers. Eve, if you could... Right. No, please. Please. Please, Maria, Maria, help me. You're ahead too, aren't you? You can stop this. We're friends, right, Maria? Aren't we? Please. And then she gets dragged off stage. The commotion makes me look up from my lap. In the pew across from mine, Maria shifts her legs back and forth. She wants to intervene. I can tell. But after everything Jail did... Intervening would put her position as a head into question. So, in the end, she does nothing. All she can do is stare sadly as Jail continues to scream and wail in terror of her fate. Cerise grabs her from behind, twisting her flailing arms into a writhing arm lock. At a distance, Eve calmly brings a white tube to her lips and puffs her cheeks. Bro, whoa, what the fuck? Jail stops screaming. What the f Hello? <laughs> what the dart? What the fuck? <laughs> a red dart has just pricked her neck. Her body goes limp. Is she dead? Is she dead? Is she dead? Is she dead? They're like, oh yeah, she's totally not dead, you guys. She's just asleep. It just makes the process so much easier. She's so not dead right now. <laughs> yeah, she's just unconscious. It's fine. With the joint efforts of Therese and Eve, Jill is dragged off the stage. Once more, Lady Amara steps up to the podium. And so, that concludes the assembly. Let this be a lesson to you all. Beware of unchecked temptation. You must now head back to your respective sex. Sect. Sects. Sects. <laughs> I'm a child. <laughs> Continue your good work. <laughs> Eve and I will take care of this matter from here. <clears throat> On command, everyone rises from their pews at once, and orderly lines of women begin to make their way out of the hall. No men here. None. Men don't get to be Catholic. We've decided. <laughs> Thank you, Streamlabs. I can see you on the floor. <laughs> Thank you, Streamlabs. Oh, gosh. Damn, they really poison darted her. That's really unfortunate. What happens when you're taken away? Where do you go? What can you do? Some say that you're banished to the outside world with nothing but the clothes on your back. Others think of more frightening possibilities. Imprisonment. Torture. Execution. None of us know. Only the heads know the answer, but they're sworn to secrecy on the matter. Those who have been taken away know too, but they never come back to tell anyone. They're so worried about what happens after they're not even shocked by the dart to the neck. Yeah, literally. <laughs> they just like, accept that, I suppose. Assemblies are scary, but every time they're held, they emphasize on an important lesson. It's easy to do insane things in the Haven, but it's also easy to be caught doing them. 
and it's easy to find out how harshly you'll be punished for your slights. In other words, it's better not to do insane things at all, which, as we all know, totally works 100% of the time. <laughs> Once, I did something insane. I was caught doing it, and an assembly was held. I was very nearly taken away, but at the last moment, someone saved me. Because I was accused, most of the Haven doesn't trust me anymore. At any moment, I feel like I'll be accused again. Whenever an assembly finishes, whenever another girl is tried, sentenced, and taken away, I'm always relieved that I wasn't the one standing on that stage. Insane things like shooting people with a dart gun for watching One Piece? Who would do that? Literally. God. After the assembly, everyone flies out of the hall. I try to stay at the back of the crowd. Pushing through, pushing through will get everyone else annoyed. After all, all of us have things to do. Well, most of us, actually. Maria told me that art sect members were excused for the rest of the day. Maria really cared for jail. I can't imagine what she's feeling right now. Ugh, my head's buzzing. I should go and do something to clear it. There's a dense wood nearby, one that has a ring path with lovely, view lovely views and comforting scenery, a pleasant place where you can forget anything terrible. I've decided I'll walk it till sunset. It's what I usually do after a stressful assembly. Watching One Piece is punishment enough. <laughs> Dang, a hot takes on One Piece. I, I wouldn't know. I've only watched the abridged series. <laughs> As always, the trees are beautiful. The shade on the ground reveals only dappled patches of sunlight, slipping through the lacework of leaves spread broadly over the canopy. The wet and earthy smell of the soil, the sounds of a gentle breeze rustling, branches brimming with flowers and fruits. The faraway chorus of songbirds. Whenever I'm surrounded by these sensations, I feel at ease. Oh, she can't get eaten by wolves. <laughs> oh no, man. Do you think they keep wolves on this island? Ah, quick quick sip. Quick sip to wet my palate. Ugh. That was like a weird frog noise. Okay, never mind. <laughs> <clears throat> For a moment, I can believe that the Haven truly is paradise. I walk along one of many, many pleasure trails that branch off the ring path, all painstakingly designed by the architectural sect. God, that's a lot of hard consonants in those words. <laughs> They're fairly short, but they always have enjoyable views. If I look hard enough through the trees, I can see some of the Haven buildings. I can't tell which ones, though. Ten cc's of holy water took her straight out. <laughs> But eventually, the trail comes to a stop. A little white picket gate marks its end and the beginning of outside. Most Haven members aren't allowed to travel outside. As far as I know, only Lady Amorous and the sect heads can go past the barrier. I'm not sure why. I overheard that some more daring people have gone outside before. Apparently, there wasn't much to see. Maybe it's a safety thing to discourage people from leaving the island. But there really isn't much reason to go beyond the island to begin with. All that lies in wait are insane lands filled with insane people. Ugh, I don't know. Anyways, the punishment for wandering out here isn't too strict. If you're caught beyond the gate, you usually warned or assigned minor chores like sweeping the dorms. So, all of that said, I don't think it hurt for me to go off the beaten path. Just a little. To take this work walk a little further than normal. Since most people are wary around me, I won't wander far enough to get into serious trouble with anyone who might see me. Besides, I'm not interested in leaving the Haven. It's the only home I know. Yeah, this is fine. This will just be a little journey to clear my head. Absolutely nothing is going to go wrong. It'll be fine. It'll be normal. I'm not going to find anything spooky in the woods. It'll be cool. If I'm careful, I can satisfy my curiosity safely. I make my way to the gate. I prize it open with a rusty creak and step through. With the quiet click of the gate snapping shut behind me, I begin my little journey outside. Yeah, what they said was right. It's not much beyond outside. There's not much about outside that's different from the rest of the forest. It's wet and earthy, 
wait, the wet and earthy smell of the soil, the sounds of a gentle breeze rustling, branches brimming with flowers and fruits, the faraway chorus of songbirds, the splattering of blood all over the branches. What? <laughs> I sense all the same things again and again and again and again, no matter how far I go. Well, I guess I should have expected this. This seems pretty in line with what the more daring members of the Haven have said. Maybe outside is just symbolic. A way to keep us all in check. Honestly, I've got no idea about what goes on in Lady Amorous's head. Wait. Hold on. What was that? Out of the corner of my eye, I catch a glimpse of something in the distance. I turn around... Oh, I turn around! <laughs> Wrong emphasis on the letters there. At this distance... <gasps> Hi, James! Hi! Oh my gosh, you gifted a tier 1 sub to Pope! Thank you so much! That was very sweet. How are you? How's it going? Hello, hello. <clears throat> I am reading. We're we're working through a visual novel about um Catholics with blow darts. I, I don't know. <laughs> Interesting so far. It's a sin to watch One Piece. That's the summary. That's that's really the summary of the last uh what twenty minutes? Thirty minutes? I turn around. At this distance, I can't make out what the something is. From what I can see, it looks gray and cubical in shape. I wonder what it is. A rock formation? A sculpture? A monument? A rock? <laughs> Whatever it is, it intrigues me. I don't think it hurt for me to check it out. I have the path entirely. Oh, I leave the path entirely. I swear I can read. I leave the path entirely, step into the underbrush, and make a beeline towards the mysterious object in the distance. As I approach, I realize that this just isn't just any object. It's a building. An unusual building. Can I see it? I want to look at it. Oh. Oh, uh, what did I click? I, uh, my bad. <laughs> you hit me and I panicked. I clicked a random button. Popping in while still at work, but this game looks awesome. Oh, thank you for popping in. I hope you have a good time at work. Reading is hard. Reading is hard. I, I'm not always good at it. <laughs> I've never seen one like this before. Back in the Haven, most of the buildings are made out of wood. But this building seems to be made out of some hard gray material. Like, concrete? Does she not know what concrete is? find out a little more. Maybe I could go a little closer, find out a little more. If I'm caught, I won't get in too much trouble, right? I'll say I was just taking a look at something strange and new. Then I'll swear to never go here again. It'll be a quick peek, and then I'll go home. Say something nice about you, Kyle? Um... Thank you for... Nothing. <laughs> nothing! You get nothing! You get no niceties! No thanks! Smacking me in the face while I'm trying to say something nice to you. I can't believe this! I can't believe it! Wrong button. Yeah, sure it was. Sure it was. Oh my god. I can't believe this. Yeah, whatever. 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 <laughs> I meant to hit you again. Yeah, okay. Not you too. I didn't want the compliment. Oh. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay, I see. All right. Well, fair enough. I, You know what? Fair enough. Can't argue with that one. <clears throat> It'll be a quick peek. And then I'll go home. Yeah, just a quick peek. Nothing wrong with that. Mmm. That's a rock. Up. Uh, that was also probably a rock. I, I couldn't see. <laughs> Up close, the gray material seems to have all sorts of bumps and cracks. <laughs> I don't recognize it all at all. <clears throat> you want an uwu? An uwu? Here you go, Adamus. I glide my hand against the material. Touching the bumps and indents on its surfer surface is strangely soothing. With small steps, I slowly make my way around the building while tracing my hand across its walls. <laughs> BRB clipping that? Good. 
The walls don't seem very different from each other, apart from the placements of small moss patches on them and the shapes of various fine cracks across them. There's no door. It's just a cube. Oh, never mind. Just kidding. And then I get to the fourth wall. Oh, <gasps> she gonna break it. <laughs> There's a doorway there at the very end. I pause for a moment to look around. No one's observing me in the woods. No one is coming out of the building. I'm still completely alone. Completely alone to explore the building, really? I approach the doorway carefully to investigate further. The door's wide open. If I lean my body forward, I can see what the building is like inside. I crane my neck forward to take a peek into the room within. Oh. From the limited amount of light, I can see that the building's insides are a ruin. The room is barren. No furniture, no lighting, not even a proper floor. All empty, except for a single banister and some stairs. A staircase leading down into the earth. To hell. But a staircase? To where? What else might be in this building? What lies at the bottom? I can't believe I've never found this place before. It's so weird and fascinating and not what... No, wait! Magda, you're outside. You'll get into trouble if somebody finds you here. And if it's inside this building, a building no one knows about in an off-limits area, you might get taken away this time. You don't want to be taken away, do you? For the past year, you've been trying to be a good girl. Why ruin what little reputation you have left now? And anyways, there's probably a good reason this building's been hidden away from everyone else. Something's, something really bad might be in there. Uh, I don't know. Girl, make up your mind. <gasps> hi, Link. Yan T U W U hi I got distracted hyper focusing on something completely random. <laughs> okay. Oh, welcome back. Thank you so much for subscribing at tier three for 27 months. Damn. Damn. That's crazy. Dot, 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 Bitch, just go in the building. But one peek wouldn't hurt, right? Yeah. I'll just go in, explore the place for a bit, and then leave. My curiosity will be satisfied, I'll return to my normal life, and I'll pretend that this building never existed. And if I sense that someone's nearby, I'll dash out of here as soon as possible. Right. Sounds like a decent plan to me. Let's go. With the goal of knowing a little more under my belt, I make my way into the building. Man, I wish I could see it. There we go. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I can't help being sarcastic during visual novels. It's just the attitude they bring out in me. The room inside is dark, empty, and derelict. There's nothing here to be found besides the light streaming in from outside and the staircase leading to the lower floor. With nothing to see and nothing to do upstairs, I take the staircase down. As I descend, I tread lightly, making sure my footsteps don't echo throughout the building. We're really in it now, folks. A few minutes pass, and then I arrive at the floor below. The room that lies here is smaller and dimly lit by a single row of fluorescent lights. They catch my eye. Fluorescent lights are unusual. Back in the Haven, most of us light our nights using beeswax candles from the community apiary. Only sect buildings use fluorescent lights. Other than the lights, this room is as empty as the one above it. The staircase still goes down further. If I go a little deeper, will I find something else? The rooms beneath the second one are largely the same. Small spaces with fluorescent lights. Some have steel cabinets, others have doors. All of them are completely empty. I don't touch any of the doors. Of course, a part of me itched to open them, but I want to reach the bottom of the building first. Oh no, the main character went into SCP-87. Oh dear, I, I kind of want it to be like SCP-like. Wouldn't that be interesting? Catholicism mixed with SCP themes. Interesting. As I go deeper and deeper, my mind frets. I need to find what I'm looking for and leave. I can't get caught. Eventually, I make it to the bottom of the staircase. I look around the clearing. The deepest room in the building is similar to the rooms on the floor above it. It stands empty. 
yet another strip of fluorescent lights runs along its otherwise plain ceiling. All that's different is a pair of heavy metal doors in front of me. Well, I came all the way down here. I can just take a quick peek inside. It won't hurt. I can handle this. If something goes wrong, I'll just run for my life. That way, I won't get in trouble again. I'm sure of it. Yeah, I just need to keep my wits about me. Muttering reassurances to myself in my head, I move forward and push the doors open. It's pitch black. Good. There's, a def there's definitely no one here. Yet, yeah, in the dark, a loud humming sound resonates from within the room. I wonder where it's coming from. Maybe a light would help me. I bring one of my hands to the underside of my dress and search for my hidden pocket. To carry daily necessities such as snacks or medicine, most members of the Haven use, a, use the hidden pocket of their uniform dress. My pocket always holds a candle dish, a candlestick, and a little matchbox. With some fumbling, I slot the candlestick into the little holding spike at the dish's center. Then, taking the handle of the dish between my teeth, I open the matchbox and strike a match on the box's side. The match's amber glow brightens the room a little, but I'm too focused on lighting my candle to see what the light reveals. I remove the handle from my mouth and bring the match head to the candle's wick. Ah, <sighs> that's a lot better. Now, what do we have here? On my left, there's a desk filled with test tubes, a rack of scary looking metal instruments, stacks of sheets covered in cramped scrawls of unreadable handwriting, a winding mass of cables. To my right, there's diagrams, a shelf filled with heavily labeled books, more cables mirroring the arrangement on the right. And in front of me, there's, there's, There's a giant machine there. I'm not sure what it's for. When I walk a little closer to it, I notice that the loud humming is coming from its inside. Blue light emits from the screens below the machine. I guess I was wrong about the lab being pitch black. Better snuff my candle. But that's not what shocks me. Strapped to the machine is someone I've never seen before. I don't even know if someone is the right word. They don't look human at all. Oh my god, they have a god in their basement! Their head hangs low. They don't seem conscious. Their body is covered in wires jutting in and out of their body. I stand on my heels to get a better look. Most of the wires are attached to their back. I move even closer. Curly golden hair gleams in the blue light underneath. White wings hang from where their ears should be. Bloody bandages cover their long, lean frame. They're beautiful. A god or a demon? Dun dun dun! Yeah, seriously. They remind me of beings I'd seen in picture books back when I was little. Beautiful winged beings that stopped wars, helped the sick, and brought wisdom to humanity. What were they called again? It's right on the tip of my tongue. Snaps my neck. Don't mind that. <clears throat> Suddenly, I hear the echoes of footsteps. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Idle chatter. Both coming from the other side of the room. I flinch. Crap. And that's, I would use a much more serious expletive than that. I need to get out of here. Run, bitch. I run towards the stairs. Frantically, I try to snuff my candle dish back into my pocket. As I leave, I think I see something. Ooh, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. So, do you think they're single? <laughs> you think that, you guys think this character's single? Do you think we can date them? Do you, I'm just, I'm just asking for a friend. I'm just, really, I'm just curious. Like, I don't know, it's, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, we'll see. I guess we'll see. <clears throat> don't bonk me. Don't bonk me. Don't bonk me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I run towards the stairs. Oh wait, I already wrote. God, my brain just like short circuited. 
looking at this character's spooky face. You can date them until they eat your liver. Ah, how dreamy. <laughs> As I leave, I think I see something. The bean's head tilts. A glint of red from their eyes meet mine. And their mouth, caked in dried blood and hundreds of tiny cuts, begins to twist upwards. They're grinning at me. No. No, 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 no. It's just a trick of my mind. I have to go. Now. Shrimp. I am. I am, bitch. <laughs> all it takes. All it takes. It's all it takes. Is having spooky character, kind of gender neutral, weird uh, uh, Catholic themes. <laughs> Fucked up religious trauma. That's all it takes. I run up to the- I run up the many flights of stairs, my legs ache, my breathing sharp, and my footsteps echo loudly throughout the building. I no longer care about the noise. Right now, I can't get caught. I can't get caught. I can't get caught. I can't get caught. I can't get caught! I repeat this in my head again and again, as if saying it enough times will protect me from being discovered. I can't get caught. I can't get caught. I can't- Oh, I can get out of here. <laughs> you caught me on the last one. Keeping me on my toes. I reach the uppermost floor, and then I burst through the entrance. Run, bitch! But even then, even out in the relative safety of the woods, I don't stop running. They could still catch me here, and I can't get caught. I don't stop running until I'm far away from the building. Until I'm past the gate. until I'm back at the start of the forest trail. Until I'm right back where I started, right next to the assembly building. I don't know if I would go that far back. I think I would try and go back to the start of the trail, put myself together, pretend like everything is cool and fine, and then calmly walk <laughs> back into the haven. Girl does not know how to be subtle about being places she was not supposed to be. My back bows with exhaustion. My my muscles are screaming. My lungs heave in and out. Sweat drips from my forehead. See, she doesn't look casual enough. She looks too panicked. She looks frightened. <laughs> She's gonna get caught. Fucking dumbass, oh my god. Sweat drips from my forehead, from the nape of my neck, from my arms onto the yellow brown grass below. But I made it. I'm here. I'm safe. I can't get caught. That was what I told myself over and over and over again. And in the end, I stand by the haven grounds once again. Uncaught. Unnoticed. Unscathed. For now. Damn. I would love to get the number of that fella downstairs. Ah, <laughs> uh -huh. huh. I'm not going back. I won't go back. I'm definitely... I'm, I'm de why would I ever go back? It's not like I'm gonna have dreams or anything about that person. <laughs> that would be really weird. <sighs> I'm not going back. I won't go back. That was way too close. My curiosity nearly got the better of me. I very nearly went insane. God, I'm so tired. I'll just slowly head back home. I'm, I'm gonna have a quick sip of my tea. Yeah. Ooh, good grief. <clears throat> By the time I reach the dorm building, it's already night. Thanks to the candles lighting the paths outside, I found my way back. With some force, I open the door and step into the common room. On a nearby couch, two Haven residents are chatting with each other. They don't notice my entrance. Uh, whatever. If I loitered around here, they'll notice me and that, and give me weird looks. Better to head back to my room. Past the common room is a long corridor with many doors on each side of its walls. Behind each door is a standard haven dorm where members go to sleep. Lady Amorous and the sect heads have a separate living space for the evenings. That's why we never see them once the day's over. Slowly, I make my way down the hallway. The wall that comes to greet me at its end has only one single door. On its front, a simple wooden plate reads, Room 108. My room. 
To get inside, I only need to turn the doorknob and push. Like how normal doors work. In the Haven, we have an honor court. Honor. Honor code. Members are expected to follow Lady Amaris's rules. We can't enter dorms without their owner's explicit permission. Makes sense. Nor can we take others' private belongings without good reason to do so. Um. Okay. If we break the rules, we're punished accordingly. Polishing all of the dining hall tables, sorting piles of documents for the research sect, or dealing with everyone's dorm room trash for a week are among the better penalties for minor offenses. At worst, a culprit is made the center of assembly. Anyways, sticking to the rules is better for everyone. Once I twist the doorknob, room 108's door cracks open with a squeak. I make my way into my room. Aw, oh, they're kinda cute! Ah, Grace isn't back yet. It's sad not to see her, but I expected this. Lately, she's been working until 9 p.m. at night. The architectural sect loves to, keeps her, loves to keep her busy. She must be working on something important. Grace is really organized, so I'm sure she'll do a nice job. I make my way to the small bookshelf in the center of our room. Carefully, I brush my fingertips over the spines of the lined-up books. Fairy tales, self-help guides, and haven made novellas are all passed over in quick succession. Finally, I stop at one spine, white with black lines, carefully tucked into a hard-to-see spot. With a little tug, the book is eased out of its niche. I stand on my toes to take a ballpoint pen from the glass jar on the top of the shelf. Then, I sit down on my bed, canopied by the tidy, empty bunk above it. Within the dorms, bunk beds are the standard sleeping arrangement. When people first pair up with, one, with their roommates, picking bunks is a traditional Haven housewarming ritual. I don't remember how Grace and I became roommates, but I do know that we picked bunks through a game of rock, paper, scissors. I wanted the top bunk. Guess what the outcome was. Anyways, I opened the book to a blank page and uncapped my pen. This is my diary. A place where I can write my most secret thoughts away from prying eyes. After I narrowly avoided the consequences of my assembly, Grace gave, me this, gave this to me as a gift. She said diaries helped people cope with troubling thoughts. She thought that it would help me too. Since then, I've used this diary religiously every day, but Grace has never seen what I've written. Grace is my close friend, but I don't know if she'd like... Never mind. Don't think about things you can't control, Magda. Just focus on your own writing. Right, okay. My mind's buzzing with stressful thoughts right now. When this happens, I need to focus on the positives. Yeah, positives. I really like um, the internal dialogues. Though sometimes it's hard to tell where it's just like totally descriptive. I guess all of it's just descriptive. I guess it's all just her describing things in her head to you and herself. What was one good thing that happened to me today? Um, you didn't die. <laughs> well, I guess there's this morning. Right, here we go. Ooh, cute. Aw, we actually get to see her right. Dear diary. Today, working in the art sect was a lot of fun. I made a lot of progress with my piece. The paradise tree theme I've come up with is really nice, and I love drawing so many beautiful birds. Maria was very supportive of my work, too. She's so kind and gentle to me. None of the other sects would... Sects? would give me a second chance, but she willingly took me on. I'm really happy she gave me the opportunity to prove myself. I hope she's doing okay, despite everything that happened today. Ah, I love her. She's beautiful, generous, and talented. I want to be together with her. Who? Who, bitch? Maria? Is she in love with Maria? I thought it was Grace. I'm sorry. I thought, I thought the implication was Grace. Hi, as the day fades. Hello, hello. Welcome in. Nice to see you. Glad you could join us. We are playing a visual novel about um, Catholic girls having religious trauma. <laughs> That's the best summary I have so far. Quick one sentence. That's 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 about what's happening right now. She's writing her diary. The Haven would never allow it, though. Members and heads can't be anything more than friends. Oh, okay, so she is in love with Maria. There's a hot angel slash demon in the basement. Listen, <laughs> was 
gonna take a second to get to that part. <laughs> I was kind of hoping Magda would bring it up again in her diary, all right? I can't, can't be simping obnoxiously in front of everybody. <laughs> The potential for manipulation, abuse, and unfair treatment is too much for our community to risk. You know what? That's actually a really fair point to make. So, like, I kind of get that. And besides, <clears throat> would she want me back like I want her? <laughs> Wait, there is? Yes. You, oh, you missed it by a few minutes. But we went down into a spooky building, and we found, like, a spooky laboratory, and there was a hot spooky angel demon thing we're not sure we only got a glance of them uh for a few moments and then we almost got caught and we had to run away but um it was very much like a hey baby can i get your number <laughs> so um yes always simp always simp time to move in literally i would i would live in a nunnery i would a hundred percent live in a nunnery if it meant <laughs> I could go and find hot angel slash demon things in my basement. I would do that. I would definitely do that. We know your type. Listen, I'm not subtle, okay? Everybody knows my type. You're not special for knowing. I'm not subtle. <laughs> All right, back to uh, Magda being a, a, a shrimp herself. I, I don't know. So I'll just keep those thoughts here, safely locked away. That's the best thing I can do right now. Signed, Magda. Ugh. That spiraled into something far less positive than I wanted. Yeah, she just like randomly was like, I'm in love with Maria. <laughs> Halfway through her diary entry. At least I wrote something, I guess. Good grief. <clears throat> Oh, I was gonna put you, you're gonna put me in the pear wiggler for my horny crimes. I'm sorry, I turned off VT Chaos for this time around. I knew you guys would be obnoxious and I just wanna read, but I let you guys keep the um throwing shit at my face. So it, by all means, throw objects at my face. <laughs> it's valid. We do that a lot. You do. But I love you anyway. <clears throat> There's a knock, the door slowly opens. We can throw stuff? Yeah, it's a redeemable um, in my channel points. It's 500 points and you can throw shit at my head. I should probably reduce it again. <laughs> Thank you, Cake, for the example. It's very appreciated. Look at Grace! She's so cute! This is the first time we've seen Grace. Grace is back. Her afternoon activities must have tired her out because she walked very slowly into the room. Hey, Grace. Busy day? Grace nods silently. Girl, you good? Oh, are you writing in your diary again? Yeah, it's really useful. Thanks for giving it to me. <laughs> I'm glad I could help. Actually, this is a rather weird question, but... But what? Um, I've been wondering for a while. Magda... Would you ever let me take a look at what you've written? I know the diary is meant to be, um, private to you and all, but I remember that you were a really great writer, so I was wondering whether I could read some of your writing for myself. Oh, wow. That's rather sudden. Also, no. Thank you for the wide water reminder. Water, water. I can say words, I promise. Also, it doesn't count if it's tea. It's I've got tea. That's <laughs> what we're working with today and also every day. <laughs> Burns the diary? No. Yeah, literally. <laughs> tea is hot leaf water? You are correct. And I fucking love that hot leaf water. Fuck yes. I literally bought a kettle for Christmas for me and my grandma so that I could make more tea. <laughs> it's like a it's like a whole gallon kettle too. <laughs> Pretty obnoxious. Good grief. <clears throat> I mean, Grace has always been my closest friend. I'm not completely against showing her my personal writing. Indeed, the small book that's on my lap contains all of my existing work. After my assembly, all of my writing sect stories were destroyed. But, uh, I'd rather not show her a lot of the stuff I wrote in my diary. 
It could make her nervous. Come on, Magda, you need to give Grace some sort of explanation. Quick! Um, well, um, you see, I, um, I don't put anything important in there. I haven't written anything great since I left the writing sect. This is just an outlet for my feelings. Grace squints her eyes. What? What's the, it, it was the truth! <laughs> what the fuck? Magda literally was like, I'm just gonna be honest. Grace is like, you shady ass bitch. What do you want from me? It's not, it's not even a lie. It's not even an excuse. It was the truth. <laughs> She's clearly not convinced by my excuse. She's known me for a long time. Why would she be? Hmm. Sorry, Magda. I'm not sure I believe you, but it's okay. If you really don't want to show me, I'll just get ready for bed. The look she gives me makes me pretty uncomfortable. Like, God, relax. Where's your diary? Jeez. Does, does she think I'm up to something? Well, I don't really want to make Grace suspicious of me, so maybe it wouldn't hurt for me to show her one entry, right? No, no, wait. I'll show you. Just let me find something, all right? Just one condition. I'm the one turning the pages, okay? Grace nods gently with a small smile. She's a snitch. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm getting like, I'm kind of worried she might be a snitch. Just a little. Okay. I trust you. Does she? Does she? Does she, folks? Do we believe her? I don't know. I breathe a sigh of relief and then pick the book up, shielding it from Grace's view. Looking through the pages for something safe to show, I land on an entry from a couple of weeks ago. All right. This one should be okay. I place the book back down on my lap and swivel it around for Grace to read. When I wrote this, the art sect wasn't busy with projects. Who asks to read someone's diary? Catholics. That's who. Catholics in a nunnery. <laughs> Why are you asking this question? They're obviously living in a dystopia. <laughs> this girl only wants to read her diary so that she can go and tell on her or something. I would throw hands. Me too. I'd be like... Damn, bitch, what are your secrets? Why why are you asking me everything? All right, let's exchange. I'll give you something. You give me something. Let's how that works. <clears throat> I took the day to wander through the haven and enjoy the scenery. I wrote about the plants and animals that I saw in that long and pleasant stroll. Squirrels and blackbirds, rose hips and elms, blue skies and warm, gentle sunshine, among other things. Grace stares at the pages, mesmerized, mem memorized. Like the only person that I'll let into my journal is my therapist, and even that is selective. <laughs> you let your therapist in your journal? Couldn't be me. <laughs> my therapist will literally be like, "Okay, try writing this down, and next time we, you can bring it in and we can talk about it." And I'm like, I would literally rather turn to dust. That's just how it is. <laughs> Wow, you really are a beautiful writer. Why haven't you written another book? I'm sure the writing sect would... Oh, I forgot. Yeah, the writing sect made a point of not wanting me back, especially with Cerise around. She'd gut me if I tried openly writing anything again. I don't mention this to Grace. I don't know how she feels about Cerise. My eye is itchy. How does she not know? How long has she been here? She's been here since birth? How does she not know? <clears throat> well, no therapist at the moment, but I do want to have some things I've written down to get to get help. That's a good idea. It actually does help a lot, I will say. But Grace, I can still do this in private. This and the work I do for the art sect, it's enough for me. You gave me another chance. I'm happy I can still stay here with you. Yeah. I understand. And I'm happy I gave you that chance. Same. Aw, they're besties. Can't wait for the utter betrayal. With that, I get up from my bed to tuck my diary back into the bookshelf crevice. I sigh in relief. That didn't go as badly as I expected. Why was I nervous around Ga Grace anyway? I trust her. She saved me from an assembly. And more importantly, she's my closest and dearest friend. Yeah, I can trust her. 
I stretch my arms, still standing in front of the bookshelf. So, Grace, are you going to get ready for bed? Yes. Why do you ask? Can I come with you? To the bathrooms? If that's all right, I mean. I don't mind. Just remember to bring your soap, shampoo, and pajamas. I won't forget this time. We'll see about that. Anyways, we should get going before they're crowded. Before they get crowded. You know how we're about to hit the peak time. Right. I'll get my stuff straight away. Beware the nice ones? Yeah. Yeah. Always. 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 You know the only bitch I trust? The one downstairs. Not Satan. I mean the, the, the weirdo in the basement who's like strapped to a machine. Like that one. Because I feel like at least that guy, he, they're probably going to be like, <laughs> they're 100% evil. But like, at least you can rely evil on evil people to always be evil. <laughs> After we wash up and get changed, we settle down into bed. On the top bunk, Grace is reading an architectural textbook with her small candle lighting the pages nearby. I'm really tired from today, so I'm going to head to bed. I crawl under my sheets and curl up tight in the comforting dark of our room. Hey, Grace. Yes, Magda? Good night. And if I don't see you in the morning tomorrow, have a good day. You're very kind, Magda. You have a good night as well. I smile. I'm really lucky to have a friend like Grace. Mm, that, this is like foreshadowing. Nope, Grace is totally a snitch. Nope, nope, no, 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 nope. <laughs> oh, they're completely safe? Oh, <laughs> you mean our buddy in the basement? Yeah, I'm totally sure. I'm sure they're good. I'm sure there is absolutely nothing suspicious. Hold on, I need to adjust my chair. Nothing suspicious about that person in the slightest. I don't know what I'd do without her. And with those warm thoughts on my mind, I have a terrible nightmare. <laughs> I drift into a peaceful sleep. And... That's what I thought. <laughs> I'm dreaming. I know I'm dreaming. Everything here looks like it does in life. Yet the world around me is like the spider webs that grow in undusted corners of the dorm room hallways. Beautiful, but easy to destroy? Somehow, though, this dream feels different. It feels as though I'm viewing a projection. I can't interact with anything or anyone in front of me. It's almost like being in front of a movie, just without the crammed wooden benches and the whirs of a research sect projection machine. All I can do is watch and listen, 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 listen. Ooh. Hey, baby. <laughs> what you doing? How's it going? Someone is there, sitting on clouds far up in the sky. They're looking down at something, cheek propped up by one hand, a wrinkled brow and lips pursed into a tiny frown. They're clearly upset by whatever they see down below. Wait, they look familiar. They're, they're, they're that being I saw in the mysterious building. That long gold hair, the pale skin, the wing ears, they're all the same. I mean, have you met many others? <laughs> How did you not immediately ping them? And yet, they're not. Here they look healthier, younger, very much alive. I wonder, how did they end up down there anyways? Suddenly, someone approaches the being. All that I can tell is that they're tall. The shadow they cast is long and dark. But no matter how hard I try, how hard I try to catch a glimpse of their appearance, I just can't. Yeah, that's the uh, demon slash angel being god? Deity? Who knows? Um, that we saw in the basement. They've just got some aura. An aura that forces my hair to stand on end and my eyes to look down and away. Like my body subconsciously deems me unworthy of seeing them. Bloodhound. Apex Legends. <laughs> the ultimate crossover. <laughs> They're clearly someone old and powerful. Kind of like Lady Amorous, only even scarier and more unknowable. Oh, my child, why do you look to the earth once more? Has their 
plain hacky sack. I want to know who wins this time. <laughs> the bean flinches, but does not turn back. Their eyes look upwards, acknowledging the arrival of the unfathomable presence behind them. The state of the world saddens me. Every day, everywhere, humankind tears itself to pieces. They are becoming ensnared by unspeakable evils and losing sight of all things good and just. Why are we no longer, longer able to help and guide them? How many times must I repeat myself? Higher powers should no longer intervene in humanity's affairs. We're simply too fucking cool to do that. Our relationship to them is not like it was 2,000 years ago. If, if we descended now as we have done in the past, our sacred powers and abilities would be revealed and stripped away from us. They have moved past revering us so that they can fulfill their selfish exploits. Yes, I know. Uh-oh, I... Did somebody go back down to Earth? Did somebody go to Earth and get their wings clipped? Naughty baby. <laughs> My child, do not roll your eyes at me. <laughs> All parents the same, even God. There is a reason we enforce this rule so strictly. Let us say you descend one of the many human civilizations that dwell beneath the clouds. You arrive, make yourself known, and promptly announce that you will save them from evil by freeing them from their vices. How do you think they would react? They would... react happily? Hmm. Uh, I think the fuck not, actually. <laughs> Points at Angel, a diaphy, a diaphy pan combo. Literally, this is literally a diaphy and pan having a conversation. A hundred percent. I mean, if I knew someone was showing me a path to paradise on Earth, I would be overjoyed to walk it. But you're not a human, are you? Oh, humans do not behave like how our po higher powers. Over millennia, I have observed how they have taken every opportunity that could have changed their ways. So, allow me to tell you how they would respond. They would laugh. Eh, let me just burp really quick. Actually, we would probably just burp initially. <clears throat> they do not see the harm they cause to others as wicked, as long as they benefit from it in the end. They would jeer at you and drive you out from their settlements. They do not like their new status quo to be challenged. And when they realize you are indeed a valuable resource and not merely some foolish false prophet, they would capture you so that they could use you. They will perform experiments on you so that your mysteries are unveiled. They will learn about your abilities, your strengths, and your weaknesses. They will use you as a means to an end. They will take everything they can and leave nothing left of your mind, body, or soul. And then make you evil and hot. <laughs> I'm so embarrassing. And then, not satisfied with consuming one higher power, they will use what they have learned to invade the higher realm and devour us all. Do you see why descending to them is an act of sheer foolishness? Oh. Oh, I guess their name is literally O. Or, it is at the moment, until we, I guess, get told the real name. Humans cannot possibly be as evil as you say they are. Oh... It is natural to feel empathy for the inhabitants of a world we have overseen for a millennia. But your views will no doubt change as you age. One day, you will realize just how much we higher powers should stand, now stand to lose. I see. Thank you. Bear in mind what I have stressed to you. Your home must always come first, young O. O nods. The tall figure disappears, dissolving into the very air like a mirage. <laughs> Me too, bitch! Your home must always come first, young O. <laughs> yeah, a brat. I love it. I love it. <gasps> Idiot. <laughs> oh, wow. So harsh. There's nothing to learn from your stupid lectures. I can take powers like I can't take powers like you seriously. You all just hide in the clouds and pretend nothing is happening while the world burns below. <laughs> Humans can't be that evil. <laughs> Junk cuts to the basement. <laughs> I bet you're wondering how I got myself here. <laughs> Isn't our duty to protect and guide humankind? 
Every day I see more cities destroyed over the pettiest of conflicts. More massacres, more deadly weapons. I can't take this. Nobody in the realm is doing what they should be anymore. If even the eldest of elders are shying away from their sworn duties, then a youngster will have to teach by example. Uh-oh. Oh, that was probably really embarrassing. <laughs> no, this was probably so embarrassing. They, oh no, they went to Earth and they got their ass handed to them by a bunch of nuns. <laughs> so unfortunate. Oh gosh. And if they try to stop me, well, I'll just kill them. It's my sacred duty. All right. Don't you agree? Magda. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Oh, hi. 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 How's it going? Hey. Hey, Bessie. Hi. Can I help you? Uh, I'm totally not peeking in on anything. I, I'm minding my business. And I'm totally trusting your word that this is what's happening. And that you are totally not lying to me <laughs> to manipulate me in any capacity. I totally believe you. I know there's like barbed wire and stuff in their body, but imagine the I told you so they're anticipating. <laughs> so much worse. So much worse. A hundred percent. The dream stops. Before I can process everything I've just witnessed, it's morning and I'm awake once again. It's the red eyes that do it. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Totally. It's doing it for me. It's really doing it for me. It's the red eyes doing it for me. I rub my eyes. What? What was all that? Was that really just a dream? Did I have a vision? Surely I didn't eat anything funny yesterday, right? Foraging troops in the forest sometimes misidentify wild species of mushrooms for the mushrooms we usually cook and eat. But we typically dry and store them with all the other foods in the communal kitchen larder. Occasionally, this means that dinner ends up making a few Haven mem members act weird for a day or so. Mm, I'm sure that's totally not intentional at all. They say things that aren't there, or dream of something so vividly that they think it actually happened in reality. But the scope of their visions never goes beyond the Haven. When this island is your world, you've got no other point of reference. Yet, my dream took place way up in the clouds in a place I'd never seen, much less traveled to. And no visions I've ever heard about had ever been about a being like the one I had seen. This being who knew about my name, somehow. What was their name again? Oh, right. Oh. Last night, I tried to forget that I visited them by talking with Grace and getting some good sleep. I ended up dreaming about them instead. <sighs> How romantic. It's like my thoughts are drawn to their presence. Somehow I want to be near them again. Me too. <laughs> me too. I'm so glad me and Magda, we're on the same page. We are on the same page. I'm so excited. I feel a nagging urge to go back outside and vi visit them once more. Are they making me feel this way? God, I hope so. <laughs> Is this urge one of those abilities I heard about in my dream? Ugh. It's too early in the day for this. It's too early to be simping. It's too early. Last night I promised myself that I wouldn't go back outside. I nearly got caught. I can't risk that again. Not unless I want to be the center of another assembly. And I don't want to let a Lady Amorous down. Or give Cerise and Eve more reasons to... Well, if they found out what I did yesterday, they'd definitely come after me. Find some new way to make the rest of the Haven ostracize me. Maybe even beat me up behind the art sect building. I don't want to go through that. So I... I... I need to forget about this vision, or dream, or whatever it is. About this... Oh, person. Whether they're trying to get me to think about them or not. I have a pure mind. I have a pure heart. I can control my curiosity. Grab a crowbar and go free an angel. It's easy. Easy. Right. Now, with that out of the way, let's make today a good day, shall we? <laughs> totally not thinking about an angel. After giving my arms and legs a nice, bleh, bleh, nice long stretch, I hop out of bed. I dress myself and head to the bathroom near my room. Whoa. Uh, 
Uh, let me just adjust my... Whoops. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. My desk is being weird. Get back over there. Scoot. Are we good? No, wait. There we go. Okay. We're fine. Everything's fine. I didn't just fuck up my stand at all. We're good. <clears throat> I clean my teeth, wash my face, and brush my hair. Once I'm ready for the day, I tie on my hair ribbons. I love them a lot. They're adorable, and they match my uniform. Even now, when most people try to stay away from me, I still want to give a good impression and continue working well for our community. Afterwards, I make my way through the dorm hall. Since the art sex... sect... sects... Listen. I just... it's really hard to say it with an S at the end. Work starts fairly late. Most of the other dorm rooms are empty. Most of the other members are eating breakfast or starting work in their sect. <laughs> Grace is likely working already, so I never see her when I wake up. I hope she's doing okay with that project. Grace is a night owl, so I don't think she enjoys getting up early. I got sects on the brain. Yeah, I know. Art. Writing. Architectural. <laughs> Once I make my way to the end of the dorm hallway, I push open the front door and walk out of the building. That's a cute little cabin. The cafeteria is five minutes away. By the time I enter it, it's still breakfast time. Thank goodness. Speaking of breakfast, I am starving. <clears throat> At one of the dining stations, I pick up a bowl of rolled oats, an orange juice box, a red apple, and a spoon. Then, I go outside and sit at one of the many empty benches dotted around the dining complex. There are benches inside too, but the sun's out today. It'd be a shame to miss out on such a beautiful what on such beautiful weather. My nose is itchy. With my spoon, I gather a clump of oats within my bowl and shovel them into my mouth. As I eat them, I take in my surroundings. I wonder who else is eating here this morning. They're familiar faces from the writing sect. We used to hang out with each other, exchanging tips and reading over exciting snippets of new works. Nowadays, their animated conversations grow quiet whenever I approach, and they turn away when I try and say hello. At this point, I don't really care who I sit with anymore. Eating alone has its own perks. Though, speaking of sitting with people, who else is here today? I swivel around on my seat, chewing on my oats. Let's see who's behind me. Oh. Oh god, no. I didn't think they would be here now. Uh-oh. Usually Cerise and Eve are eat super early. Avoiding them was partially why I started eating later in the day. No one bothers you when you when there's barely anyone around. But today, I didn't expect them to grab breakfast right after me. I, I think I'll just finish my rolled oats here. Yeah, I'll finish them up, then grab everything else and go. I can carry the apple and juice with me, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. If I'm lucky, they won't notice me. I'll just sneak right past them and slap Cerise in the face. Ooh, yes! Oh, yes! Oh, yes! yes, yes, yes. <laughs> they are gonna speak into my head? Flirting with me. They're flirting with me. They're straight flirting with me. Yeah, look at her chatting to her friends without a care in the world. She knows what she did to me behind closed doors. Back in the writing sect, she took my old stories and shredded them so I shouldn't, so I couldn't take them home like everyone else. She used my personal work to make me the center of an assembly and made sure that all of it was destroyed. When I didn't get taken away, she beat me so hard that I couldn't move for a week. Cerise deserves hell. She's a jealous, spoiled bitch who lashes out at me when she doesn't get her way. In fact, she deserves way more than just a slap. The two-faced, huh? These thoughts, I'm... I've never had thoughts like these before. Oh, wait. Eve's there, too. Seems like she's really taking her time with that porridge of hers. Why don't I help her hurry up and shove her face in it? That can't always act so high and mighty, so maybe eating like an animal will humble her. 
She loved rubbing in how much better Cerise's trash writing was during that assembly. I swear, Eve's like Cerise's lap dog. The head of the research sect, at the back, at the beck and call of a lower ranking member. How shameful. She's the reason I had an assembly. No, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Where the hell are these thoughts coming from? I hate Cerise and Eve, but I've never thought anything like this before. No, wait, that's a stupid question. I already know, don't I? Those special abilities, that being, oh, in the basement. Those thoughts are from them, aren't they? Well, at least Magda has a brain cell to, to connect things together. Teaching violence to the fragile mortals. Yes! <laughs> yes! Damn, I want an angel with questionable morality sending violent thoughts into my brain. <laughs> yeah. Me too. <laughs> I'm so thrilled. Oh, Mado, you have impeccable taste. Impeccable taste, my dear friend. At least we know O knows how to have a good time. Yeah! <laughs> Ugh. Well, wherever they're from, they're putting me at risk. The best thing I can do is resist them. No matter what Cerise and Eve did to me, oh, are we getting- Oh my god, guys. Are we getting a corruption arc? Are we getting a corruption arc? Are we getting a corruption arc? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Dancing around in a circle. Okay, 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 okay. I can read. I promise. I promise. <laughs> <clears throat> no matter what Cerise and I Eve did to me, I can't make room for any violent impulses. I must be good. I will be good. I am a member of the Haven. It raised and fed me because it cared for me. I must show the same kindness and care in turn. I must resist this temptation. I must be pure of heart and mind. Quickly, I pile rolled oats onto my spoon and shovel them into my mouth. Over and over and over and over. I can't focus on anything else but eating my food. I can't give room for those thoughts to come back, to make me insane. I'm in no state to finish my apple and juice here. I'll just take them with me. I can have them on the way to work. I need to get out of here now. The sooner, the better. No, you see, Mother, I was simply receiving visions from an angry god and they told me to commit violence. It's basically a bulletproof excuse. Literally. Oh my god. I crackled my knuckles really quick. <clears throat> Gamer hands. <laughs> You'll get institutionalized. Avoid the chair. <laughs> well, at least you can plead insanity. I hurry straight to the art sect's building, all while sucking down my orange juice and something else. <clears throat> I mean, what? What am I saying? I didn't say anything. The apple remains untouched, and <laughs> at the end, I decide to save it as a mid-morning snack. I go to the ca I got to the cafeteria around 8.30 a.m., so if that's the case, and it took me an hour to eat, work should be start- It took you an hour to eat a bowl of oats? An hour? Okay. Work should be starting by now. Right. No more bad thoughts. Just painting. Let me take a deep breath. In and out. Yeah. Here you are, Magda. Let's make the rest of the day a good one. I push the door open and walk into the studio. Everyone else is collecting their tools and going to their studio spaces. Work has definitely started. Following suit, I go to my personal shelf. I take out my watercolor pencils and sketchbook and make my way over to my studio space. Okay, today's work. I'll continue to develop my painting project. Oof, goodness, I'm, I'm sorry. I've been burping a lot today. It's, it's been a problem. Maria liked this thumbnail the most, so I'll draft its color scheme before I start painting the final piece. The birds on the tree look so beautiful. I can't wait to pick out their colors today. To think that a year ago I came to the art sect, unsure if I'd ever loved making art. Before that, writing had been my sole, all-consuming passion. Being forced out of the writing sect was painful. Now, though, I've grown to really treasure drawing. Instead of words, I can capture my surroundings and my feelings with beautiful shapes, delicate lines, and vibrant colors. Maria was kind enough to let me enter a sect, despite the stigma that lingered around me. I can only try to be better where I am. 
After everything she's done for me, I want to produce work that she and Lady Amaris can be proud of. <laughs> I've come a long way over one year. But, speaking of Maria, she'd normally make an effort to visit each studio by now, just to check on our progress. But today she's just sitting in a corner of a side room, staring outside an open window into the forest. I wonder why. Ah, I can't believe I nearly forgot about yesterday. Jail must be on her mind. Losing someone you cared about is never easy. Assemblies may be common, but the fallout after them is hard. Ah, I wish I could do something to put her mind at ease. <laughs> Even O is like, are you gay? <laughs> Nothing's stopping me. There's no reason I can't just get up from my seat to go comfort her. I thought I was done with these stupid thoughts. At least they're not violent this time. But still, ugh, I wish they'd just leave me alone. No. Why... Why am I dismissing my feelings? Oh. <laughs> sneaky, 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 sneaky. Imagine O being like, just like rubbing their chin. Being like, okay. Violent acts, a little too extreme. She's not really receiving that very well. What about... What if I just spur on the gay thoughts just a little bit? Just a teeny tiny bit. I know deep down what she is to me. I've got a window of opportunity now. I should take advantage of it. I could go to her. I could wrap my arms around her gently, give her a soft kiss on the crown of her head, Hold her warm hands, interlacing our fingers together. I've thought about something like this for so long. Maybe if I'm lucky. Maybe in her need for comfort. She'll let me tell her how I really feel. I don't care if relationships between heads and members are forbidden. Now that jail is gone, I want her to know that I'll be there for her. I want her to know how much she means to me. How much I owe my happiness to her. I want her to know how deeply I want her. How I loved her in my f- Oh, <laughs> didn't even let me finish reading! <laughs> no, rude. Gay thoughts, <laughs> every Catholic's weakness. <laughs> Literally. Please, I can't deal with this anymore. I get up from my stool and march towards the bathroom. Literally throws water on her face. <laughs> Just like, I gotta calm down. Ha! Huh, she's literally gonna do that! Uh, with some force, I wrench one of the old, rusty sink faucets open. The pipes gurgle below, and soon a steady stream of water rushes out from the tap. I cut my hands and put them under the gushing stream. In my palms, the cold water rises fast. Quickly, I splash the water on my face. Once, twice, three times, again, again, again. Gay thoughts, you can't catch me now! I keep on splashing until all I can think about is the coolness around my soaked collar, hair, and face, and the sound of the water flowing away down the sink pipes. Right. After cooling down like this, these thoughts should leave me well alone. I'll just take a look in the mirror and see where I need to dry- Huh? Yes! <laughs> yes! I'm so- pleased right now. <laughs> well, hello <laughs> there. My reflection isn't my own. A golden face stares back at me, smiling serenely, fingers frozen in a beckoning curl. Oh, dear. Oh, no. Oh? I squeeze my eyes shut and shake my head. When I open them, I see my own reflection once more. I love you so much. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> Breathes on the mirror and draws a little heart. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. They really want me to remember them, huh? I can't go back outside. I don't want to get in trouble again. I really don't. This is getting frightening. I don't know what'll happen if I continue ignoring O's presence. 
They said they had a mystical power, but other than this and my strange dream last night, they haven't done anything weird to me yet. Somehow, though, my gut tells me that they'll get me into serious trouble in one way or another. Maybe going back is for the best. I don't know what they're capable of. They might force me to do something terrible. Ugh, they might force me to do something terrible. Ah, how awful. <laughs> Or they might make me act on my impulses. Only one of these options is in my control. The other is surrounded by all sorts of uncomfortable uncertainties. Oh, how tragic. Yeah, literally. I guess I have no choice. I need to go back. Tonight. I can only hope I don't get caught. <laughs> the rest of the morning proceeds in a fairly standard fashion. I figured out the colors I wanted to use for the birds. They're bright and cheerful. If Maria sees them, I hope they would make her feel a little bit better. I didn't get any more strange thoughts either, which was a relief. Yet, I feel an underlying sense of dread. I still have to follow through with my dangerous decision. I can't imagine what O would do to me if I bailed at the last second. Ah! <sighs> Outside. Here I come. I'll go get dinner afterwards. I just need to make sure that no one sees me. Or hears me. Or knows I've left in the first place. Yeah, I need to be very, very careful. But if this goes well, then I can pretend that none of this ever happened and return to my normal life. No one will suspect me. I'll continue painting with Maria. I'll continue talking with Grace. It'll be business as usual once again. Hold on, I'm gonna have a sip of tea. And a quick stretch. Ooh, big stretch. Ah. Okay. I'm going to adjust my headset. Okay. Scoot back in. Get my seat situated. We're back in business. <clears throat> I put away my project materials and leave the art sec. Last time, a forest path near the assembly building got me outside. So if I look hard enough in that area again, I should find O's building. I straighten my back and puff out my chest. Hold on, I'm actually just gonna crack my back. Ooh. I don't know if you heard that one. <laughs> that was my spine. Oh God. I straighten my back and puff out my chest. There's no turning back now. With that, I march towards the assembly building with as much confidence as I can muster. Beer be now I want to sort out my back. <laughs> Just lay on the floor time. Ah, oh, excellent. My favorite time of day. If I can convince them to leave me alone for good, my normal life in the Haven will stay normal. Yeah, that's the plan. I will not go insane because of them. Totally. Totally won't. Oh. Oh no. This is bad. Very, very bad. I knew that something was off with Magda. I told you she's a fucking snitch. I didn't think following her would lead to this. After what Magda went through. I never thought she'd break the Haven's rules again. What? What am I supposed to do now? I know I'm supposed to tell Lady Amorous about suspicious behavior. That's a critical haven rule. But Magda's... Magda's my... I don't want to see her get hurt again. What to do? She a snitch. I'm just going to go see my new... Bo boyfriend? Girlfriend? Significant other? Consider this. O has two hands. No, bitch. Nope. They're mine. Mine. <laughs> mine. Mine. No sharing. There will, there will be no sharing. None. None at all. <laughs> it took some time for me to get here, but I'm now at the entrance of the building. I can't hesitate anymore. Better to fix this problem here and now. Any fear or indecision will only get in the way of what I need to do. Quickly, I make my way down the dark flights of stairs. 
As I go deeper and deeper down, I catch brief glimpses of the shelves and doors, still closed, still ever mysterious. The auntie opposed divine polycules more at 11. Correct. Because I want to be the center of attention. <laughs> they don't matter. Getting to the basement does. All I need to do is get into the lab, get that bean to leave me alone, and then get out. Simple. Finally, I reach the basement. The lab doors stand in front of me, just as imposing as they were yesterday. I take out my candle stub, my candle dish, and a box of matches. I assemble the candle. Camp Campbell's. Campbell's! Candle! I light the wick. I enter the lab. Hey, baby. How's it going? Not much has changed. The only sign of anyone else having been in this room is that the papers on the desk seem to be rearranged. The scientific equipment and tools lie strewn around as before. The wires remain tangled, carpeting the cold tile floor. The imposing machine at its heart hums in a quiet drone. And the bean in the center of the room, that O, oh, still sits where they always were, hooked up to cables in the center of the room. I march right up to them. They still seem unconscious. Let's hope getting their attention works, or else there wasn't any point to me taking this risk again. Psst. No response. They don't move. I wonder whether they even heard me. I guess it wouldn't hurt if I tried again. And maybe I'll give them a small prod, too. Still nothing from them. I really don't want to speak any louder. I'm desperately trying to avoid doing anything that could give away my presence. I didn't come all this way for you to ignore me, clown. <laughs> Literally, wake the fuck up. <laughs> We're on a date now. But if it means sorting out this problem once and for all... Hey! Finally, the message seems to get through. They stir. Their head bobs upwards. Their eyes open. The fuck? For the first time, I meet their powerful gaze. Their eyes. They're red and shiny, glittering with light. In the warm glow of my candle flame, they remind me of winter berries. Bright, tempting, and extraordinarily deadly. They're beautiful. I can't look away. It's impossible to stop staring. Uh, yeah, totally. I totally get it. <laughs> it feels like I'm losing my train of thought. Losing my needs, my worries, perhaps even the reason I'm here. All to keep basking in that stunning gaze. I'm going to... I... Excuse me. Their voice jolts me back to the present. Um, er, uh, what's going on again? I... Why am I here? Ah, uh, my eyes. You saw them, didn't you? Um... I briefly look up at their face again. I see their scarlet stare. Yes? I think so. I apologize. They have that effect. Not many can claim to have a gaze as enticing as mine. But I'm getting the sense that you're not here to get a better look at me. Are you? Who are you, anyways? Well, um, my name's... Hold on. Now I remember why I'm here. I can't sit around here answering O's pointless questions. Never mind. It's not important. I've got a few questions. Oh, you're the kind of human who asks questions first. Then makes their introductions later. You're no fun. Their eyes roll in clear boredom. For some reason, their flippant demeanor, demeanor makes my skin crawl. I grimace. Look, I'd love to sit down and get to know you, but I'm not really supposed to be here. Wait. I recognize you. You're that human who visited me earlier, aren't you? What? How do they know that? If they saw me yesterday, it would have been from a distance, in the dark. Well, however they did it, it's probably not worth lying to them. They probably know who I am. I mean, sure, yes, you're Magda. You must have visited me because of that dream I sent you, yes? I knew it. They sent that dream to me. Yeah. That's partially it. I saw someone like you and... So you know who I am already, yes? Huh? Yeah, your dream told me as much. Your name's O. Is that right? Indeed, it is. 
but please call me Niels. O is a little formal. All right, Niels. Now, can we quit the small talk and get to why I'm here? By all means. You came to me, so I'll lend you an ear. Okay, this morning I started out having extremely weird thoughts. I felt violent, impulsive anger towards people I've been trying to avoid. I felt dangerous, unhinged desire towards people I care about. I've never had thoughts like these before. Never in all of my life. Did you have anything to do with them? Why does it matter? They're terrifying, that's why. For the past year, I've been trying to behave. I'm scared that your thoughts or whatever will cause something bad to happen. I might act impulsively and get punished. I might try to repress them, lose control, and get punished. At worst, I might control myself in some harmful, unethical way and get punished. See, Nils, I don't have the best reputation in the Haven. As is, I'm walking on a thin line between staying there and being forced out for good. I don't want that, because the Haven is the only home I've ever known. You could rip it away from me in an instant. So please, if you're the one sending those thoughts, please stop. Leave me alone. <clears throat> you gotta stop giving me gay thoughts. It's making my life real hard. <laughs> Neil's tied up with barbed wire and tortured. Oh, that's so horrible. <laughs> Literally, it's so true. Niels is just like, and I'm bullying you. Am I bullying you right now? I'm I'm strapped to a torture device, and I'm the one bullying you. Mm, okay, begging your pardon, Miss Magda. Ah, I see. I see. Magda, I understand completely. I can tell these thoughts distress you. You're scared that I'll take away your friends, your family, your loved ones. It's true. I am responsible for making those thoughts appear. And for that, I apologize. But Magda, I didn't make the thoughts themselves. Those thoughts, they're very much your own. All I did was amplify your subconscious. In other words, I made the murmurs of your heart audible. Wait, they're... My own? How's that supposed to make me feel better? Well, you're rather good at muffling those thoughts. Amplifying them took quite a bit of energy out of me. <laughs> Not that I have much left. But if I didn't make you aware of them, you never would have returned to me. So, now that I'm here, are you going to get rid of those thoughts or not? I will. Since you risked so much to be here, I'll leave you be. Finally. Thank you. For the rest of the day. Hold on. Uh, just for the rest of the day? Uh, but it's... it's nearly over. Uh, shouldn't this agreement be permanent? Hmm. I can't promise that. What? I came all this way to ask you to stop bothering me. Right now, I'm breaking one of the most important rules in the Haven. And now, you're telling me that you might do it again? Well... <laughs> Think of it this way. I've just done you a favor. You remain undisturbed. You abide by whatever rules you need to follow. You live your normal life exactly as you wanted. But in return, you need to do something for me. That's how favors work, right? So whenever you think these disturbing thoughts, come and visit me. It'll be like a homing signal of sorts. I'll cry, the cry of a weak, and a feeble creature begging for some company. A struggling existence, simply asking for one act of kindness. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> I love them. I love them so much. No. First of all, I never agreed to any of this. I literally just met you. The dreams, the visions, crazy thoughts and feelings. You've caused all of my problems today. There's no favor for me to begin with. Secondly, how many times do I need to repeat that I'm not supposed to be here? Or why it puts me at risk? If you want company so badly, go find someone else. Get <laughs> Strapped to a torture device. And Magda's like, why don't you go find 
some other friends. <laughs> so mean. Oh my god. Unbelievable. <laughs> Heartless. Heartless. Good grief. Alas, I don't have anyone else. The other humans who visit me are cold and cruel. It's awfully lonely. You understand what it's like to be alone, right? Your body aches all over. You have so much to say, but no one to say it to. You might as well be a crack on the wall. The pain is uniquely terrible. You know this. I know you're going through a lot right now. I had to flick through your thoughts and memories to send my dream to you. Old friends no longer wanting to be seen with you. Your reputation tainting you like a disease. The bullying that people get away with. Because somehow, they feel that you haven't been punished enough. Have I not been punished enough? <laughs> Why are we here? Just to suffer? <laughs> Good grief. Not even the people who care about you know what it's like to be you. <laughs> you guys think you're really fucking funny. You guys think you guys think you're really fucking funny, huh? We're trying we're trying to have an intimate moment with my spouse. <laughs> God. Can I read now? Am I permitted to read? Can I read? We're reading. I throw one thing and the whole channel decided Yonti needs to be pelted. Literally. God. God. <clears throat> know what you go through every day? Know the unfairness of how you live? But Magda, I do. Like you, I know what it's like to be isolated. To be dealt an unfair hand in life. To have no one get you. You wouldn't leave someone like you to suffer. Would you? Magda, I've been here for... I can't believe this. I'm trying to voice our spooky love interest. And you're making this <laughs> so difficult right now. <laughs> Two bikes and a microphone straight to the noggin. Literally. God. <clears throat> I've been here for a very long time. An eternity, even. But I don't think I have much time left. Staying conscious has been a struggle. The other humans who come here, they've hurt me a lot. I've put up with that for a long time. All by myself. In this dark, dirty place. But I can't go on forever, you know? So, Magda, I know we've just met. I know you have every reason to be scared, to be skeptical, to be angry at me, but I don't want to die alone. Even if you say nothing to me, I really would appreciate every visit you'd make. Oh no. It's like working on me too. I'm like, damn, well, okay. If you, if you insist, I suppose I could come visit. <laughs> oh, they're a master manipulator. <laughs> Love that Yanti hears they have been hit and immediately looks at chat. I always look. God, many visits and the pining grows. Literally. Oh my God. No one else could understand me like you do. Oh fuck, oh fuck. <laughs> This bitch has me wrapped around their little finger. Oh my god. O could ask me to massacre this entire place. I would do it without question. Without question. Without a thought in my fucking head. My little cotton stuffed head. All I would be thinking about is, well, I hope O is proud of me. <laughs> oh my god. But at the end of the day, what you choose is ultimately up to you. Sooner or later, you'll be free from my thoughts anyways. I'm... I'm sorry, Niels. That was mean of me. I don't know what you've been through. 
I guess giving you some company wouldn't hurt. I'm glad you understand. But even if I do visit in the future, I really can't handle more of those thoughts. Please stop making me think that way. Hmm. All right. It's a deal. I'll tone them down. And I promise I won't send them at all unless I need you. You swear? Niels pauses for a second. They seem to be carefully considering their response. Yes. <laughs> I promise. Oh. <laughs> that oh fuck was exquisitely timed with the impact. Yeah, good for you. I'm I'm proud of you. Glad for you. I don't know what you've been through. I mean, you can take a pretty good guess, literally. <laughs> Just think creatively, Magda. I know you've been like in a nunnery your whole life and have never been permitted to be creative, literally ever. But, you know, just, just, just think, just think. I don't know whether or not to believe them, but for the moment, I choose to. Good, thanks. I just hope you don't make me visit anytime soon. I can't, I hear footsteps gradually getting louder from the other side of the room. <gasps> Crap, they're coming. I've got to go, Niels. Now, I'll see you whenever you need me. Goodbye, Magda. I look forward to seeing you again. Love you, babe. I rush towards the doors behind me. And up the stairs, and out the door, and da 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 I make my way up the many flights of stairs and dash out of the building. As I run through the forest and back out onto the nature trails, my stomach twists with anxiety. Ugh! I can't believe I let them have the upper hand there. I swore that I'd never visit them again. Now I have to see them whenever they call for me. I was hoping to end this once and for all. At least it won't be. At least it won't last forever. I just need to be careful. Literally, Magda's like, at least it won't last forever. They'll be dead soon. <laughs> so fucking heartless. So heartless. I can't believe this. Good grief. Uh, yeah, yeah. If I'm careful, then I won't get caught. All I need to do is give Niels some company until they... Until they can't see me anymore. Then I'll get back to my normal life. Simple enough. Right? After some time, I finally return to the art sect building. Lunch has long passed, and a handful of sect members are filing in from the dining hall, satisfied and ready to return from work. To work. I, on the other hand, am starving. But food must wait. I'll have to hold on until dinner. I turn to my piece once again, prompting myself to start work. But no matter how many times I look at my newly made color notes or pick up and put down a pencil or a paintbrush in anticipation, I can't get myself to make a single mark on paper. Concentration is, ex is increasingly out of the question. I've got too much on my mind as is. Ooh. Ah, ugh. Big yawn. I look around the studio over the side of my easel. Maria still hasn't moved from her corner by the window. Her sadness is noticeable, even all the way from here. Yanni got him. Oh, you're so funny, Cake. You're so funny. My yawn counter isn't working. Why is that? Oh, there we go. It took a second. All right, we're good. Now, yeah, VT Chaos isn't the one in uh, charge of the yawn counter at Streamlabs. It just took a second. <laughs> Thank you, I'm hilarious. No, you're not. <laughs> <clears throat> Has everyone else noticed how she's been feeling? Did someone reach out to her while I wasn't here? I wonder. Does anyone else feel as sad about jail as she does? Even if they don't say it. Or can't say it? The urge to walk over to comfort her strikes again. And as soon as the feeling presents itself, I am immediately reminded of this morning. Where I just came from today. What I just roped myself into some hour or two ago. The presence of Niels dom dominates my thoughts. Oh, the gay thoughts, they're back, but they're different this time. I visited them, not once, but twice. On the second, I, I came in hoping I'd stop the insanity they put me through over the past two days. I came out promising I'd see them again. Why the hell did I do that? I felt badly at the time, and it would be nice to talk openly with someone who, 
who seems to get me, but now that I think about it, I'm just screwing myself over again. If I had only gone to that outside building once, I could have easily made some silly excuse to anyone who found out I was there. Whoops! I accidentally found this weird building with scouting out some foraging sites for the kitchen. I looked around the place, but couldn't find any bushes or berries in season. Gee, I sure am adult! Well, um, I wanted to find references to sketch for the painting I was doing on, for an old writing sect fable collection, and then I ended up in that place. Sorry. I saw the structure in the distance on one of my nature walks. My curiosity got the better of me this time, but it won't do it again, I promise. I'm okay with using my toothbrush to clean the dorm toilets for the next two weeks. Obviously, I would have been punished regardless of the excuse, but I went to that building twice, with just under a day's time between each visit. That alone would make my punishment more severe. But if someone knew I went inside and explored it, there'd definitely be another apologia assembly about me. I can't go through that again. Even if Niels is dying, even if they are alone and in pain in a dark, gloomy lab, I still don't want to see them. My mind's a mess. <laughs> Roped to O, you say? Yeah, what it sounds terrible. It sounds like a terrible fate. Maybe my hunger is getting to me more than I anticipated. Yeah, that's it. I'll just try and get some more work done, and then I'll eat a filling dinner. Maybe my thoughts will be clearer by then. Oh. oh, speaking of dinner, I've probably got another half hour in me before I gotta go get dinner myself, because I am super hungry. In the end, I didn't get much done. My tree of paradise remained a sketch on the paper, filled with neither life nor color. Afterwards, I left the sect building to go to the dining hall for dinner. There, I took a small slice of shepherd's pie. Ooh, my eyes itchy. Cushioned against a dollop of mashed potatoes and some peas. All of it was filling, but bland. Dessert was fruit cups with scones and jam. The roll cakes promised on the weekly menu had already run out. How disappointing. Once I ate my subpar dinner, I went back home. Ugh. I wasn't expecting today be to be as long as it was. And the food didn't help one bit. My thoughts still haven't cleared up. My head hurts so much from- <laughs> That was so lucky you got a burger too! God damn it, cake! Jesus fucking Christ. Can't believe this shit. My head hurts so much from all the stress. And from having shit thrown at it! from having a burger thrown at it. I think I'll just rest a bit. I lie down on my bed, flat on my belly, and mash my face into my pillow. Mmm. Yeah, that's a little better. It's nice and cool. If I just focus on my breathing, maybe I can relax and collect myself. I'll just lie here and take a... Oh. A knock at the door. It clicks and creaks open. Any possibility of an early sleep goes out the window. But talking to Grace might help, too. Grace makes her way into the room. I pick my head up off my pillow and give her a little wave. With tired eyes, she looks at me. She doesn't wave back. Long day? Grace hums and nods. Yeah, me too. It's clear that all her energy's been sapped. The architecture sects keep... Kept her- oh my god, that's a lot of K's and T's in that sentence. I know you're probably not in the mood to chat. Grace doesn't seem very responsive. Wow, they must have been really harsh on her today. I guess I'll let her know that I see how hard she works on the daily. Maybe it'll cheer her up, having someone appreciate her efforts. So, um, Grace? I've noticed something about you recently. I'll just speak my mind, I guess. Okay. I don't know if I've told you this before, but, um, your work ethic for your sect, tasks, is incredible. I'm impressed. I don't think I could ever do as much as you do. Yeah, but I don't have much free time, though. I can't chat with friends. I can't read any of those novels collecting dust on my bookcase. Even my meals don't last longer than half an hour. It's just one project after another with these new developments. Ugh, I can't even imagine. But, once you're done with all this, I think you should ask for a break from work. I really do. 
Like, whoever's running your sect, whether it's your head, the head team, or even Lady Amorous, just figure out how you can get them to give you a break. You need it. You say that like it's easy. But you get the idea, right? That you need to take some time for yourself once the hard work is over with? Well, regardless of whether they give it to you or not, I think you deserve something special. When you're done with the worst of your projects, I'll treat you. I'll get you some sweets from the tuck, tuck shop. Tuck shop? Is that supposed to say truck? I think it's tuck. Tuck shop nearby the dining hall. Cherry gummies. Candy coated chocolate drops. Those um, non pareilles or whatever they're called again. Sour belts in every flavor and color. You name it, I'll get it for you. I know the shopkeepers don't like me very much, but if I'm paying for your snacks, they can't complain. They know how hard you work. So, does that sound good? Grace nods slowly, almost imperceptibly. I can't tell if she's really listening to me. Hmm. That's nice, Magda. Yeah, she's listening. She's definitely listening. I'm convinced she is. So, that's a plan. When Grace is all done with work, she'll let me know what she's craving, and I'll go there and get her all those things. Yeah. Grace just not gonna... She's not gonna out me? Not gonna say nothing? Okay. Talking to her puts me at ease. Grace is such a good friend to me. She's gentle and kind. She's smart and helpful. And she really saved me last year when I thought I was gone for good. I'm glad she's in my life. So, so if I'm caught trying to visit Niels... Ah, why didn't I realize this earlier? Grace could help me out again. All this time... I had a really good friend by my side, someone who knows what I'm dealing with, at least to some extent, someone I care about a lot, someone who cares for me. If I'm careful, then, then I may get out of this situation all right. Yeah, yeah, I'll just play my cards right and everything will be fine. I'll give Niels the company they want and then after all said and done, I'll return to my normal life in the Haven. Ah, my future suddenly seems a little brighter. In a burst of newfound confidence, I jump up from the bed. Surprised, Grace steps back a bit. Hey, Grace, want to go get cleaned up together? Beat the evening rush? Grace shakes her head. Um, I... I think I'll do it a little later. You know, exhausting day and all. Right, right. Sorry about that. But hey, no sweat. I'll be back soon, okay? Okay. She's gonna go through my diary. I take my pajamas and start to make my way out of the room. As my hand clasps the doorknob, ready to turn, I feel a tug against the hem of my skirts. Hmm? I turn around. Grace's hand is clasped to, uh, clasped to the fabric, stopping me in my tracks. Wait, Magda. Yeah, what's up? Um, if, if I'm not in the room by the time you come back. Please don't worry. I promised another friend that I'd meet her tonight. You know, outside of the dorms, I need to ask her for help with something. So please don't worry about waiting for me this evening. You can head straight to bed. I'll clean up and get to sleep later. Gotcha. In that case, have a good night, Grace. Yeah. You too. She gonna snitch. She's going to wrap my ass out. I am so fucked. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, she left the room. Sorry. I forgot to read that line. <laughs> right. I need to get going. She should be here any minute. Who? What? What's happening? What are you doing? Huh? Oh, if I recall correctly, we were going to meet... Psst, Grace. I'm over here. Okay. Ooh. Uh oh. Okay, I'll be there in a moment. Uh uh oh. It's been a while since we've talked together, Grace. Same to you, Cerise. It sure has been a while. How's your project? You look super tired. I swear, if I get a close enough look at you, I'll see eye bags. Cerise, please. Sorry, sorry. We'll have it. But seriously, why are you spending so many hours in the architectural sect? I've never seen anyone here work like you do. You know you're allowed to take breaks, right? Hell, even Eve takes time off. And she's like the textbook definition of hardworking. I know. I've seen her work for the research sect. 
Her output is truly incredible. I wish I could be like her someday. Look, Grace, I know why you're working so hard. You want to prove to Lady Amorous that you're worthy of being the next head of the architectural sect. That you've got the drive and the diligence for that kind of responsibility. But if you want to prove that, that prove that you can sustain the effort, you should pace yourself. Frankly, you need to. If you don't, well, you'll burn out like crazy. I've seen it happen to other writing sect members. It's seriously tragic. They can't write for e weeks on end. So, bottom line, don't do that to yourself, okay? Okay, okay. I get it. I'll try to stop working a little earlier in the future. If it helps, though, I'm getting Eve to put in a word for you at the next sect head meet. Sound good? You're very kind, Cerise. I really appreciate it. If you do end up doing that, please tell Eve I said thank you, too. I don't want her to think I forgot about her, either. No problem. I'm already- I'm always happy to help a friend. Damn! We knew it! We knew it, too! <laughs> wow. Um, can I talk about why I asked to meet you, though? Sure, shoot. Um, how do I put this? It's, well, about... About... Oh, I know that look on your face. It's about Magda, huh? Yeah, yeah, I knew it. What's going on with her? How should I say this? How should I bring up the subject? I like Magda. Cerise hates her. Cerise has always borne a grudge against her even before Magda's assembly happened. Cerise will almost certainly tell Eve everything I tell her now. If I speak, Magda will get into trouble again. Yeah. Seriously, girl, you just you're just gonna be like, yeah, fuck my roommate. <laughs> I don't want her to be in trouble more than she has to be. Not after everything she's been through. Everything she's still going through. But at the same time, I saw Magna go outside. That curiosity of hers, it hurt her once before. These dangerous stories she penned when she was still in the writing sect came from it. She wrote fan fiction. I'm scared it's going to hurt her again. That she hasn't learned to rein it in like she was supposed to. That she might even go insane. I defended Magda from her assembly because I believed that she could protect herself from these impulses, and because I believed in her goodness as my dear friend. Would I... Would I really still be a good friend if I don't stop Magda from going insane? So, I'll just... I'll just tell Cerise part of the story and see where things go. <laughs> wrote RPF and still got smited by the church. Literally. Oh, hold on. My freaking stand is really giving me a hard time today, and I am not entirely sure why. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Thank you. Go back into place. Alright. Cool. There. Your stand from JoJo? <laughs> Yes, correct. Please don't get too angry at Magda for what I'm about to tell you. For my sake. You know how I feel about her, Grace. But fine. I'll hold back for you. Thank you, Cerise. I appreciate it. I'm... I'm worried about Magda. This morning, I went on a walk to assess the older nature trails that the architecture sect had built some time ago. Whilst I was checking the path signage near the assembly building, I caught a glimpse of her on a walk. Out of curiosity, I just decided to follow her, just to check on what she was doing. Following one of the trails, she went into the woods. And then, she went off trail. Cerise, she went outside. And the thing is, I don't think she went there accidentally. She didn't seem to be wandering or meandering. She looked like she knew what she was doing. And, um, because of that... I'm scared that Magda, that Magda will end up like the people outside the Haven. You know, she literally told her everything. That wasn't even part of the story. Unless, unless Grace actually followed her all the way to the building. Hmm. You know, that she'll go insane. So, why are you telling me this? Because I can't tell Magda that I saw her out there. If I told her, she'd never trust me again. I'd never be able to help her anymore, and I'd never be able to forgive myself. I had to tell someone else, to get this off my chest. And, as her friend, 
I want to guide her back on the right path before it's too late. <sighs> Sorry, Grace. I can't hold my tongue anymore. It's already too late for her. I had a hunch that bitch would cause trouble again. Cerise. Listen, Grace. You know pardoning Magda in an assembly was a huge risk, right? No one in the Haven had ever done that before. Lady Amorous and most of the sect heads took a chance on her, her talent, and on the good things you had to say about her. That small mercy on their part was what spared her from going away for good. Of course, I was fully against it. Eve, too. We both recognized Magda had a dangerous element in her, one that threatened the Haven with its mere presence. So I'm just completely unsurprised. Sooner or later, she'll make someone else go insane. I know she will. No, Magda, she would never... You know why the assemblies are zero tolerance? Why people like Jail can't come back even if they want, even if we want them to? It's not just to set an example. It's to protect us. Once someone tastes a drop of insanity, they'll do everything in their power to get more. They always do. They get worse and worse, ever more ravenous, ever more depraved, no matter how many times we try to beat it out of them. And you know, most of the Haven's members could easily go insane. Whether they say it or not, they can't control their vices, violence, lust, greed, you name it, they're probably holding some insane vice in secret. Magda's a walking flame for their kindling. If she goes insane, most of the Haven will go insane with her. Except us. People like me, you, Eve, and Lady Amorous. We're exceptions to the rule. I can't wait to watch her do some fucked up shit and get her ass beat for it. It's gonna be great. We've got good track records. We're really pure of mind and heart. And that's why we need to keep an eye on her. I understand. I expected this from Cerise. I guess not telling her everything I saw was a good idea. Ooh, what else did she see? I understand why she feels this way. I really do. I care about the Haven as much as she does, but to be honest, I think some of her hatred of Magda stems from pure jealousy. Back when Magda was in the writing sect, Cerise was always one step behind her as a writer. She envied all of the praise her work received and was always looking for ways to get an edge over her. So when she found Magda's private stories a year ago, well, it was perfect evidence for her needs. What she did with it was obvious. I don't want to go back to that stressful time. Grace, I just... I don't... Cerise? Huh? Cerise's voice is starting to shake. Her eyes are watering, her lip is quivering, and her cheeks are turning bright red. <laughs> it's okay, Cerise. She's just a fake bitch. Ooh... It's okay. I... 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 I'm terrified, Grace. I'm terrified of what might happen to the Haven. To me. To Eve. To you. I don't want Magna to do anything to you. I want what's best for you. You know that, right? So you understand why I feel this way about Magna, right? Because I... I don't want you to end up like Jail did. So many people have gone insane already. Good, talented people. I don't want to lose you. I can't lose someone I care about. I know. I know, Cerise. I hear you. Loud and clear. You a fake-ass bitch. <laughs> but, um, I'll try my best to sort it out as soon as I can. On my own. I just needed someone to listen to me. To help me get it off my mind. Bye. But if Magda gets up to any other business, give me a shout, okay? You don't have to do this alone. I'm always willing to help. I know, and I will if I need anything. So, so we're good, right? Mm-hmm. Everything's okay. I'll see you around then. I actually have to head back to bed anyways. I've got a big writing project I need to break the back of well, something, I don't know. No worries. I'm in the same boat as you. It turns out the trails I inspected do need to be recleared and reconstructed after all. Heh, <laughs> right. I nearly forgot I was talking your ear off about taking a break just a few minutes ago. Well, take care now. Night, Grace. Good night, Cerise. <sighs> my stomach's twisted into a tight knot of anxiety. I feel sick to my core. Talking didn't make me feel better at all. Probably because you talked to the worst fucking person imaginable to talk to.
In fact, now I think I feel a whole lot worse. It's morning again. My sleep was a dreamless one. Totally unmemorable. I guess Neil's kept their promise of bugging me less. Honestly, I'm relieved. Today's just going to be another normal day. I push myself out of my bed and stretch my arms. Time to start my morning routine. I head over to the bathrooms. I wash my face and brush my teeth. I get changed into one of the cubicles. I tie my hair ribbons in once again. And then, to breakfast. Hopefully there will be something good today. I'm crossing my fingers for something savory. Buttered waffles, cheese-filled pancakes, omelets bursting with roasted vegetables. Oh, I'm so hungry. <laughs> I'm going to give it another 10, 15 minutes and then I'm going to call stream because I am starving to death and this is really not helping. I finally reached the dining hall and walked up, walk up to check out the morning menu posted outside on the meal bulletin. Oh, it's just scrambled eggs and French toast today. Good for the people who like French toast, but I guess the eggs with some salt and pepper will do for now. I put an apple in a juice box on my tray too. Guess it'll be in yet another average breakfast. Once I finish my meal and put my cutlery and plates away for the cleaning, I make my way over to the art sex building. I think concentrating on my painting will be a lot easier than it has been in the past few days. I can't wait to find, finally make some real progress. I hope Maria's feeling a little bit better. Maybe, maybe my work will bring a little bit, cheer, little bit of cheer to her too. Now, what should I do today? I could decide on what patterns should be around the border or add new details to the sketch or even get started on the base flats for... Schmack. Huh? Whoa. Uh Ugh. Eve's right in front of the art sex building. She's looking around as though she's searching for something. Or someone. I guess I'll take the long way around, to the back exit. I really don't want to have to deal with her today if I don't have to. But what's she even doing here? As a head, Eve is constantly at work. When she's not grappling with research sect projects, she's managing her sect team Assessing problems brought to her brought to her attention and carrying out the social responsibilities of her position. Dealing with Cerise has always been a bigger problem for me than dealing with dealing with her. Yet for someone so busy, she sure is far away from her own sect. Knowing her, coming all the way out to the art sect wouldn't even be at the top of her list of priorities on a regular day, unless. Oh, oh no, oh no 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 no! She turns her head. Her gaze snaps onto me. I scream and run away in a panic. I'm in trouble again, aren't I? Act casual. Act casual. Hi, Eve. How's it going? Hello. I, I've done nothing wrong. Magda, can I speak to you privately? Eve's direct question confirms the suspicions of my rapidly growing dread. There's no way I can escape this confrontation. I can't even ignore her. It's not allowed. Eve's a sect head. I grip my skirts to steady myself. There's almost no question that I'll get distressed by whatever she has to say. I'll just focus it all on the fabric of my fists. Concentrating on something else will help take the sting out of this conversation. Okay. Come aside. This won't take long, I assure you. Eve gestures to a large tree, close to the back of the art sect's building. I grip my skirts even tighter as I follow. Every few paces, she turns her head back to check that I'm still there. That I haven't run off. She smacks me. <laughs> I'm waiting for it. Just full on, backhanded, right across the face. We both reach, reach the tree and Eve turns to face me again. Magda, please stand there. She gestures to a spot in front of the tree. A patch of grass enclosed with its old large roots. The choice of spot appears intentional on her part. The roots surrounding it are large and would easily slow any attempt I might make to dash away from here. <laughs> Goes and gives you the Lord's shuriken. <laughs> Literally. I move to the spot she indicates. Put your back to the tree trunk. She's the It's like the firing squad! Holy shit! I step back until my spine is flush with the rough bark behind me. And when I next speak, I expect you to give me full eye contact. You will listen to every word I say. My eyes focus on hers. I nod again. Beyond the standard consequences of disobeying a sect head, disobeying Eve came with its own unique punishments. 
Once, I was assigned to give Eve a monthly report from the art sect. When she addressed me, she asked me to give her eye contact. Out of fear, I forgot. But for Eve, this slight failure to follow instructions warranted retaliation. She made me clean the research sect's floor, sect floor, sect floors for a week. My Eve's eyes narrow. Two little black drops of ink fixed in her sockets. I know you're up to something, Magda. What are you talking about? What exactly am I up to? I don't understand. Don't act coy around me. You've been breaking the Haven's rules again, haven't you? Thing is, I've heard about you recently. The things I've just learned. Trespassing on forbidden territory. Entering forbidden buildings. Ooh, how? How did she know all that? Uh-oh. Mm. Oh, did you tell people of our little visits? Investigating forbidden subjects are only some of the things I've heard people say you're now involved in. Really, Magda, I never expected much from you. But this, this is obscene. How does Eve know about my trips outside? I can't let her know she's caught me. She'll really rub it in if she's proven right. The community's been watching you a lot more than you think. And it seems our fears about you not straightening yourself out were confirmed on several fronts. Eve draws a little closer. Her voice drops to a whisper. You know, I never thought you deserved that second chance. She says this as though her hating my guts would, would be a new sudden revelation to me, literally. <laughs> Not after all the disgusting things you wrote in secret. From one look, I knew, I knew that it was the brainchild of someone fundamentally dangerous. A capital T- Threat. <laughs> Damn, relax. It's not that serious. And now you're at it again, doing things you just shouldn't be doing. Honestly, it's a miracle you didn't screw up for every year. Anyways, we know you've been acting out of line. We are watching you closely, and we will be taking note of your actions. I won't let any more disgraces befall Lady Amorous because of you. Eve, what, what's all this? Since last year, I've been on my best behavior. I've only made little slip-ups, like everyone else does. I don't want to be a disgrace to Lady Amorous. Plead to Cerise, then. She was the one who told me about you this morning. Ugh. Of course Cerise was part of all this. Of course. But there's no way she would have been spying on me. No way at all. Everyone knows she's working on a massive novel right now. She doesn't have the time to monitor me all day. So someone else. Someone else had to tell Cerise about me. Someone else might have known what I've been doing. But if that was the case, then... Then... Who told Cerise? A friend of hers. That's all. I trust what I've heard, though. Cerise carefully considers her sources of information before talking to me. And knowing you and what you've always been like. I believe every word that girl of that girl's judgment. Anyways, I'm expected to return to the research sect soon. Plenty of more important things for me to do. I'll put on hold just to manage a liability to this community. Shut. Shut up. Shut. The. Fuck. Up. Shut the fuck up, you stupid cow. Ever the stuck-up bitch, aren't you? Always trying to find one way or another to look better than me. Is being the head not enough for your massive ego? Maybe you'd feel better if I squeezed it all out of you. Just choked you right here, right now. Oh, it's so simple. All I have to do is bring both of my hands to your pasty neck and... Hello? Magda? I'm snapped out of it. Eve's looking at me with visible exasperation. Like she's talking to a moron. My hands are bunched, locked tight into my skirts. My palms are slippery with sweat. Are you even listening to me? You broke eye contact. Ugh, forget it. As always, it's one ear, it's in one ear and out the other with you. I'll be going. Expect to hear about your punishment soon. Punishment? How would she punish me based off of hearsay from Cerise? Even if, even if Eve hates me, and even if the rumors were true. I put a lid on the swirl of panicked speculation beginning to swirl in my mind. Eve, clearly done with her task, turns to walk away. Oh, thank goodness. 
She's finally leaving. I'll just, I'll just, just take the stick. No, I'll take the hardest, naughtiest branch of this tree. I'll follow her from behind and I'll thrash her hard with it. Beat her and whip her until she, until, oh. <laughs> Those strips of her flesh come flying off. I'll rip the skin off of her if I have to. Peel her body like crimson fruit to bear it. Oh no. Oh no. No, no, no. Not this again. Niels. Niels, Niels, if you hear me, if you can hear my thoughts, I am in deep trouble. So please, please don't do this to me. My breathing becomes shallow. The bad thoughts bubble out. Everything gets even gets ever larger, ever worse, and ever more impossible to overcome. In a swirl of intensifying anxious nausea, I try to ground myself. Magda, you know what to do. Push the bad thoughts back. Push them back. Notice your breathing, Mag Magda. Look, you're hypervent hyperventilating right now. You can fix this, remember? Remember how you calm yourself down? Breathe in. And out. And in. And out. And in and out 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 and out Yeah 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 okay 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 and in and out 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 and Eve is long gone by the time my breath evens. She's already back at her sect, isn't she? <laughs> my anxiety is rushing back, my head spinning, my hands ache from being squeezed so tight for so long, my legs are shaking violently. I think back to what Eve said, that a punishment is waiting for me. My neck's truly on the chopping block now, and at any moment, Eve or Cerise could drop the blade on my neck. And that other person who told Cerise. Who exactly were they? Yesterday I was in a deep part of the woods. The permitted walking trails near there are old and haven't been cleared in a while. Nobody really picks that area as their first choice for enjoying the haven's natural beauty. Maybe everything Eve said was just pure coincidence? Cerise and Eve both hate me. They hate that I've stuck around for this long. <laughs> the old in and out. Yeah, literally. God, saw the first few minutes of the game and came back to this. It seems the game got more intense. Yeah, just a little. Just, just a tiny bit. Maddie, you gotta follow the breadcrumb trail of, violent <laughs> of violence to gay thoughts. <laughs> Literally. I'm sure they've come up with some elaborate plot to try and get me taken away. Oh. I don't know. I don't know anymore. If Eve's sus suspicions are taken seriously by the others, I don't know how I'll be punished. I don't want to be in another assembly... If that happened, I don't know what I'd do. Well, at this point, I guess everything's out of my control right now. There's nothing more I can do about this. I'll just brush up my dress and head to work. I want to go see our, our spouse again. <laughs> After taking a little time outside to collect myself, I head to the art sect building and make my way to the main studio. As usual, the studio is quietly humming with activity. Washing, glasses, clinking, drawers filled with paper and canvas being opened and shut, and the muttering of peers critiquing one another's drafts fill the air. Apparently, everyone else's day was going completely normally. I take a deep breath to situate myself again. Focus on what you can control, Magda. Just focus on the present. Right. Let's start painting. My tools are where I always put them. My drafts are where I left them. I'll just go over to my spot and then, yeah, just another day of work. Just business as usual. I've set up everything in my spot. But once again, just like yesterday, I can't focus on my piece at all. Eve won't leave my mind. Oh. I tried to start a wash of green watercolor for the leaves of the tree. The section that needs coloring is large and simple, taking up most of, the, most of the sketch I made earlier. I put brush to paper and begin slowly and evenly blocking in the paint. Expect to hear about your punishment soon. My brush stops. The even light green of the paint is pressed deep into the paper, 
a near black dock of, dot of color forms underneath the brush tip. The painting is ruined. I'll have to start again. Clearly, worrying about Eve is interfering with my own work. I need to clear my head. I need to preoccupy myself with something that doesn't leave my mind open to my own thoughts. Walking around the studio might help a little. Looking at other people's projects from afar, taking in the sights and smells of art being made, or listening to the idle chatter of my art sect peers might preoccupy me. Maybe that'll be the trick to get Eve out of my head. Snap my neck. I walk around, peering in the various studios of the art sect. One team is planning a new mural for the dining hall, themed on the community's responsibility for its own members. One team- oh, two other girls are building puppets for a theater adaptation of one of Cerise's popular short stories, a fairy tale with her stylistic hallmarks of slap slapstick humor and a simple lesson at the end. One team- uh, god, I keep trying to read the beginning because I think it's going to start a whole new- yeah, my brain. Yet another team is designing simple and elegant path signage for the architecture sex ongoing trail project. They're all too preoccupied to notice me and chase me back to my workspace. I welcomed the momentary invisibility. But soon I grew bored watching them and start retreating into my mind once again. I need to find something else to focus on and fast. I turn around and make my way down a corridor to look for another studio to observe. Perhaps the pottery team's work on the decorated tea set for Lady Amorous's upcoming birthday. As I walk, I briefly catch sight of a familiar veil and dress in another room. Oh, is that... I stop in front of the doorway. She's standing in one of the illustration studios, talking with a few other artists. Yes, it is! It's Maria. She's back. She's really back. Within the room, Maria gently points at a section of one girl's sketch. It looks like she's fixing the drawing's perspective issues. I'm glad to see her back to work as her usual self, but I don't think she'd be very happy if I interrupted her. Instead, I remain outside and observe, entranced. I'll just wait until she finishes up here. After some time, the girl's problem is solved. Maria turns to leave, followed by a storm of praise and thanks from the illustration team. As I watch her walk out of the room, it dawns on me that another source of guidance exists. Maria might be able to help me too. Yes, that might be what I really need to do to help ground myself. I might just ask her to listen as I get these feelings off my chest. Maria makes her way down the corridor, back turned in my direction. She didn't notice me outside the room, waiting. No offense on my part, though. She's almost certainly preoccupied with checking in on the many studios under her care. All I need to do is head up to her and say hello. That'll get her attention. Maria? Oh, hello, Magda. I saw you wandering around the studio earlier today. Do you need anything right now? Though her characteristic concern for others is there in her voice, her cheer is only mild. Maybe I misread how she felt. I guess Jail's still on her mind. Hmm, if that's the case, perhaps I shouldn't ask her for help. She's already got enough on her plate. Maybe I'll just end this conversation, head back to my studio, and wait. No. If I don't ask her for help, I'll be fighting with my thoughts for the rest of the day. I won't get anything done on my project. Again. Just ask, Magda. Relax. You know Maria loves to help you. Maria is someone you can rely on. Um, can I speak to you privately? Maria looks at me with mild questioning in her eyes. She folds her arms together. Is this to do with your project or something else? Something else. But it's making it harder to do work in general. So I guess it's impacting the project too. Is it okay if we use one of the private studios? I, I promise I won't speak loudly. Okay. We'll go there, and I'll lend you an ear. I'm gonna have a quick sip. <sighs> okay. With that, I head towards the back of the corridor. Over there are a few, few small studios designed for individual artists with personal projects. None of the art sect members have elected to work on their own this season, so they currently remain empty and unused. When I turn around, I notice Maria is trailing a few paces behind me. Her expression is unreadable. My stomach gives a slow, small twist. I still wonder if this is a good idea. Well, there's no going back now. I enter one of the studios and sit on a work stool. 
Maria stops in front of me, in the center of the doorway. She stares down at the floor. All right, let's talk. Well, um, what should I say to her about Eve? Eve is a sect head. Maria definitely knows her, at least as a professional peer. But what if Eve's not just a peer to Maria? What if Eve's also Maria's friend? Damn, I didn't consider that before talking to her. It's no secret I hate Eve, but talking ill about a person who could be someone Maria cares about? That might make this conversation go pear-shaped. Even if Maria is kind, even if she is forgiving, she's still ahead. She'd probably get suspicious if I told her what Eve said about me. Hmm. Ah, ah, ah. My thoughts are getting all scrambled with anxiety again. Damn it, just say something. Anything. Look, she's already looking impatient. Spit it out already. So, um, someone, um, threatened me before I got here. Eve. Eve was threatening me. She scared me a lot. What she said to me is distracting me from work right now. I can't stop thinking about it. Eve again, huh? Mm-hmm. What exactly did she say? She threatened me with punishment because of something I did. Something I did a few days ago. It wasn't anything serious, but I'm scared that she's planning something bad for me. And, um... This isn't the first time that Eve's done something like this. Ever since I got out of that assembly, Eve's treated me this way. Always looking to punish me for every little slip, using harsher and longer punishments than everybody else. Maybe even planning things. Things like the placement of my dorm room to isolate me from everyone else. After all, she is in charge of the room assignments. It's almost like she thinks I should have never been allowed to stay. Like... Like, she wants my life here to be as miserable as possible. All because I didn't leave that day. Maria, I, I'm i terrified of what might happen next. What they're going to do to me. What should I do? All the things bothering me are finally out in the open. Maria pauses for a moment. She crosses her arms in thought. I look to see if there's any sign of anger on her face, any drop of annoyance. Ugh, maybe she does understand after all. Maybe I was wrong to judge her too soon. I feel warm and safe already. Yeah, Maria will always be there for me. I sit in the comfortable silence of her presence. For a brief moment, I imagine her wrapping her soft arms around me in a deep hug, her hands slowly stroking my hair into soothing pets, her whispering gentle things into my ear to calm me. Maria's eyes open, and I snap out of the daydream. She's about to say something helpful, I just know it. I give her my full attention. I ready myself to listen to what she has to say. <laughs> she tells me to go fuck myself. Magda. Yes? Have you just tried ignoring Eve? Or Cerise, for that matter? Huh? Just ignore Eve? That's not the answer I was expecting. Um... What do you mean? Maria gives me a tired sigh. She crosses her arms in frustration and closes her eyes. Look, Magda, ever since you came to the art sect, you've talked about your problems with them nonstop. It's always Eve. It's always Cerise. It's always Eve and Cerise. At this point, my advice is to ignore them. Stay out of their way if you can. In my whirlwind of anxiety, I forgot. My stories were, for, were far from new to Maria. She already knew about Eve and Cerise. If you pay them no mind and just focus on your work here, then they'll leave you alone. They won't find any reason to give you trouble because you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. They might even come to respect you for your efforts. Well, I somehow don't believe that. But Maria, I've, I've tried to focus on my work. I want to work hard every day I come to the art sect, but I can't focus because of them. The things they say and do to me constantly throw me off. And even when I do get something done, they always find new ways to... Magda, you're aware I've just lost one of my closest friends, right? That I'm constantly fighting my grief to keep on top of my responsibilities. Ooh, this is not going well. <laughs> I might not seem as out of it as I did over the last few days, but my pain hasn't magically disappeared. Right now, the last thing I want to hear is you complaining about the same two people. Oof. You know, Magda, you know who would listen to your problems? 
You know who would listen to you and understand you and get it and get how hard it's been for you? You know who would understand that, Magda? Niels. <laughs> even if one of them is a sect head, even if they really are hurting you, even if it is tough for you, over this past year, I've told you to avoid them, to stay out of trouble, to come here to the art sect if you need something to do. I've tried to support you through your highs and lows wherever possible, but even so, you still antagonize them. I mean, if this is the first and only time that Magda's actually, like, stepped out of line over anything, this is harsh. This is mean. So, Magda, I can't break your habits for you anymore. I need to draw a line somewhere. Please don't raise this issue again, even when I do recover, even when I do return to a positive mental space, even when I'm long past all of this. If you complain about this again, I will ignore you. Be self-sufficient for once. Oof. Ha. <sighs> when I hear her, my entire body grows cold. No, 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 I I'm wrong. I'm just hearing things. My mind's just making this up. Yeah, I'm under a lot of stress right now. There's no way she'd actually say something that cold to me, right? But when I look at Maria, her face matches the tone of everything coming out of her mouth. Her expression is stern. She's staring right through me. That aura of warmth and comfort she exerted is instantly destroyed. All I can do is apologize. Okay. I understand. I'm sorry. I reply with a voice barely above a whisper. A choked little sound. I try to fight back tears. Maria says nothing back. She sighs and simply walks off into the corridor, off to return to work. Damn, you should go visit the only person who's been nice to you! <laughs> and I'm alone again, sitting on a stool, in a back-end room, on the edge of breaking into sobs. At this point, all I can do is go back to my studio, back to my piece. I really should follow Maria's advice. I need to get back to work and just ignore all this. But I can't move. I don't have the energy to get up. I'm not sure whether I even want to go back to my spot. All I can do is imagine staring at Maria working hard from far away. Stare at her guiding other members, smiling at them, laughing with them, giving them kind words of advice, avoiding me, pretending I'm not there. Huh. This entire time, I've been a burden on her. I never helped her with her own problems. I only whined about mine so that she could tell me everything would be okay. Even if I did try to avoid the people hurting me already, even if I did try to work hard every day, even if her kind advice didn't change my circumstances, I wouldn't be surprised if... if she didn't want to be around me anymore. Ha! Ha ha! I want to puke! I hurt someone I cared about. I hurt someone I loved. I'm... disgusting. No. No, wait. 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 Wait, 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 wait. Maybe... Maybe I'm overthinking this. Maybe Maria's just in a bad mental space right now. Everyone's had those before. We've all said things we've later regretted. She wouldn't really stop helping a member of her sect forever, right? Yeah, yeah, she wouldn't do that. Sh would she? Haha, <laughs> I'm silly for thinking that she'd be back to normal over just a couple of days. Right now, Maria's grieving for jail, like she was yesterday. And she'll probably be like this for, well, I don't know how long. You can't rush the sadness away, but sooner or later the pain will go away, right? Yeah. So if I think about it that way, Maria doesn't really hate me, right? She'll just... she's just tired. She's just... needs some space. I understand. All I can do is respect her wishes. I'll do my best to follow her advice again. I won't talk about my problems anymore. I'll try to keep to myself. I'll stay out of everyone's way. I'll put my nose to the grindstone and work on my painting. Redo that draft I screwed up. Keep out of trouble's way. Keep on trying to find the silver linings in all of this. Then, if I work hard enough at being good, maybe Maria will notice. 
maybe she'll come back. Maybe she'll talk to me again. Praise me again. Make things go back to normal. Yeah, normal. Damn. That was unfortunate. I couldn't get any more work done. My brush and pencils lay untouched. I just stared at Maria, at the room, then at my easel. It's now evening. I'll probably go and eat now. I get up and leave for the dining hall. Today, the hall's pretty crowded. The dinner line's starting to wind outside the building. I guess it's about 6 p.m. That's typically when the dinner crowd peaks. Being surrounded by lots of people is painful. Whoa! <gasps> Thank you for the follow, official saint! Yes, I can read. I, I swear I can read. Hi, hello! Welcome, welcome! <clears throat> you know what cures depression and all known disease? Going and hugging Neil. Literally! <laughs> She's like so upset right now. And all I can think is like, you know who would understand? You know who would commiserate with you right now? You know? Oh my god. Literally, Neil's <laughs> Neil literally listened to Magda bitch to them about how hard her life was strapped to a torture device. And Neil's is like, I get it. It is hard. You are having a hard time. I feel bad for you. <laughs> Love that for them. I hear if you hug Niels, you ace all of your classes and become a sect head. Yeah, literally. <laughs> Niels has the patience of a saint. <laughs> oh, wait. Ha ha. Yeah, I get it. You're so funny. <laughs> I've got no right to complain, though. Everyone else is enjoying themselves. I'll just grab my dinner, sit down, and suck it up. Oh my god, that reminds me. I was supposed to get food like 20 minutes ago. I'm trying to find a good place to stop, but like there's, I just, I kind of want to just keep reading. <laughs> Tonight, fish is on the menu. I take a lightly seasoned cod filet, accompanied by a side of seasoned green beans. Desserts, rice pudding with jam. I hate the taste, so I ignore it entirely. All in all, tonight's food is standard haven fare. A savory and healthy meal. Nothing worth complaining about. Until you get your face smashed into it by Cerise. Within a half an hour, I clean my plate. I don't leave a single crumb behind. I didn't even notice it, but I was really hungry tonight. Usually, I'd always have leftovers to toss out, which got me looks from the girls on catering duty. At least I didn't have to deal with that on top of everything else today. Thanks, stress. I take my tray up to the washing rack to be collected by other Haven members assigned to the kitchen rotation this week. Whoever's washing my dishes tonight, at least you're going to have an easier job than usual. With no reason to expect that I could restart my peace in my present state, I see no point in returning to the art sect. Instead, I head home to the dorms. Do, do. Now <laughs> you want to fight me so bad it makes you look silly. <laughs> I do want to fight you, Cake. By the time I reach my dorm building, the sun sets. You think you're pretty funny. I think you're pretty funny, huh? Pretty, pretty hee hee hoo ha. All right. Ideally, if she goes to bed and night passes, we'll stop when she wakes up. But I kind of want to see if there's any more Niels interaction. Okay, I just need a dosage. It's been too long. I haven't seen them. <laughs> I'm obsessed. The little lights leading down the dorm path glow gently in the dark. The building's decorative candles nestled in the window frames look warm and inviting. I make my way inside the dorm. <laughs> Just a pinch of Neil's content. Mm, please. <laughs> in the common room, I see the same two girls from a couple of nights ago. They're nestled on a different couch, knee-deep in another, in another bout of gossip. When the door closes behind me, the chatter stops. Their heads turn. Their eyes lock onto me. Both of them are staring. As I move past them, the conversation picks up. A frantic exchange of whispers, interspersed with glances that follow me around the room. Whatever. I know they're talking about me. I don't want to know what they're saying. I slowly move my way towards my room at the end of the hall. Even walking is tiring at this point. At long last, I reach my door. Room 108. With some force, I push it open. Inside my room, my legs give way. I fall, chest first, onto my bed. My body sinks into the sheets. All of my muscles ache. 
My mind is totally and utterly burnt out. My eyes sting. Today was exhausting. First Eve, I shudder. And then, Maria? No, I said what I said. I have no right to be upset with her. Maria's still grieving over jail. She had every right to act that way towards me. Every right to not want to deal with me anymore. And now Niels, right? Yeah, seriously, can we have Niels, please? Please, 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 please. Content. Ugh, who am I kidding? It still hurts. Badly. I can tolerate Eve's bullshit. At this point, I expect it. She hated me from the start, but Maria... Maria, too? <sighs> I'm being selfish again. I don't have the right to feel angry at her. To expect the response I wanted to her, wanted from her. I threw my pain on her without noticing her own suffering. And yet, even still, I'm upset because of her. For not understanding me when I needed her to. For not doing more to help me. For telling me that my problems would go away if I simply pretended they didn't exist. Even though she had no rational way of knowing the extent of my situation. Even though her advice was sincere. God, I... I hate this. I hate this. I hate this. <sighs> I spring up from my bed. I can't take this anymore. I need to get this... These... All of these feelings out of my head. These disgusting, ugly, violent feelings. I need them out. I need them out. I need them out. I need them out. Frantically, I scramble to the bookshelf. I need that book. I need that book now. I run my finger along the spine, searching for the right color, the right pattern, the right texture. My hand scrambles frantically into every niche, every nook and cranny, grasping, looking. I grab hold. I grab hold. I pull out my diary. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just put those feelings in here. Just like I always do. Once the bad thoughts are gone, on paper, once they can be shut between covers and kept away, I'll be normal. I'll be normal again. Yeah. Normal. In a nice, easily discover discoverable place. <laughs> Literally. I want to be normal. Normal like everybody else here. Normal like everyone else is here some- Everyone else here is somewhere. How? Whatever. You know, what the fuck I'm saying. <laughs> I frantically rattle my hand along the top of the bookcase until I feel the cool press of glass. My fingers encircle the jar, tilting it downwards. I rifle through for the feel of the smooth, smooth plastic lid. I take my pen. I crouch down, eyes focused on the blank pages. I write. And draw. And scribble. And tear. And write and draw and scribble 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 and tear 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 and Girl, you good? Leave me alone! Over and over and over and over again, I do it. Do this, I'll purge these feelings. Purging these feelings will make me good. I'll be good. I'll be pure. Mind and heart both, like everyone else here. I'll be good. I'll be good. I'll be good. I'll be good. Grace walks in. Crap. Crap, crap, crap. I have to hide this. She can't see what I just wrote. What I've been doing. She'll... No. Hold on. Grace has seen my diary before. Yeah, and she didn't mind what she saw, did she? Yeah, well, you wrote about flowers last time. I don't know how she's going to feel about you describing peeling their the head sex skin off of her body. That might be a little different. This game is violent. I feel like it's going to get so much worse. Like, I feel like it's setting up, like, a tone of, like, okay, that's an acceptable level of violence. And then it's just going to go really quickly downhill. <laughs> So I can trust her. Yeah, I can trust her. I snap the diary shut. Ah, uh, Grace, you're back. Grace doesn't look at me or reply. Her eyes aren't focused. Her outfit's in disarray. She looks awful. Like she could collapse on the floor at any moment. The architectural sect has really been working her to the bone. There's no good in disturbing someone who isn't all there right now. Better let her rest. It seems like she won't be cleaning up with me. I'll just get ready for bed myself. 
Looks like you've had a long day. I won't bother you with small talk then. I'm gonna go wash up soon. Just letting you know in advance. Grace still says nothing. Strange. I don't push the issue further. I make my way out of the room, with my toiletries and pajamas in tow. After washing, I climb into my bunk below. Grace has moved, but her oddly vacant demeanor hasn't budged one bit. She's sitting on the top bunk, gazing abs absently at the ceiling. Hey, Grace? Are you alright? There's a long pause. Then Grace finally speaks. I just... have a lot on my mind right now. Is the architectural sect bothering you again? Did they keep you up with work more than they should have? I... You missed one and I draw and scribble and tear. <laughs> oh, my bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you for noticing. I'll do better next time. <laughs> uh, I guess you could say that. Oh, okay. An uncomfortably long silence follows. Grace's closed off demeanor makes me a little nervous. Well, um, once you get through work, I hope you're still looking forward to it. You know, the whole tuck shop thing? Mm. Another uncomfortable silence. I guess she's too tired to even think right now. Literally, why do we care about anybody else? We met a hot god. Why are we thinking about anybody else right now? <laughs> I would stop caring about everybody in my life if I met a hot deity in a basement that I could go save? Are you kidding me? I... No, no. No, I would, I would, I would abandon all, all reason, all thoughts. I suppose that's why I'm not a protagonist. <laughs> I would speed run, speed run the destruction of humanity. That's what I would do. Well, I won't keep you up. I've also had a long day, so I'm heading to bed. Good night, Grace. Thanks. Thanks for always being here. Sort of. More or less. I can't hear whether Grace replies, but either way, I know. Whatever happens tomorrow or the day after or the day after that, I still have Grace. Mm, I, mm, I don't know. She's kind, of, mm, she's kind of a snitch. Just a little. Yeah, Grace. My best and only friend. The one person I trust above all else. Who definitely is not telling your secrets to everybody. <gasps> Nails? Nails? <gasps> Ooh, we get another perspective from Grace. She's finally asleep. Oh, Lady Amorous, what am I supposed to think about Bagda now? First I see her sneaking outside, then last night Cerise warned me about her. And then, this evening, Eve told me that she found some footage. And then after, after all that, I don't- Footage of what? Oh, Magnus Diary. She- she forgot to put it away. She's usually so careful with it. When when I walked in, Magda scared me. She was hunched over in a small corner of the room, scrolling on the diary pages like she was possessed. I'd never seen that side of Magda before. Oh gosh, even thinking about that still makes my heart hammer away like mad. But that diary... Magda was always the one turning the pages. She never let me read for myself. She skipped over certain sections. I got the feeling that she was choosing what I got to see. Yeah, li that's the point. <laughs> what the fuck? That was literally the point. What's really inside that book? She's so secretive about her problems. Always hiding herself from everyone, from me. Why would she not trust her best friend? A year ago, I defended Magda in an assembly. By some miracle, I encouraged everyone to spare her. I thought that with their help, I could help her become a better person. Right now, she's traveling a dangerous path again. Her curiosity really has been leading her down dark roads. Cerise said so last night. Eve suggested much of the same. What the fuck did Cerise say? What the hell does Cerise even know? <laughs> so I'm... I'm the only one who can help her. Who can save her. So... So I have to take this matter into my own hands. Quietly, I crawl down the ladder of the bunk bed. When my feet touch the ground, I carefully position myself. I try not to set foot on any of the creaky floorboards. Magda is not a heavy sleeper. I can't afford to wake her. 
Once I'm certain that I'm safe, I'll carefully make my way to Magda's diary. Left on the floor, shoved to the side. I reach down and grab it. Oh, I want to see what it says. I want to know what it says. <laughs> there it is. A little bug filled with lots of secrets. There's no going back once I open this. I'll learn everything about Magda. The truth. What's really going on inside her head. Carefully, I open it to a random page. What I see is what I see horrifies me. Magda wants Cerise to be... Magda wants to Eve. Methods of torture. Scrawls and scribbles of contorted expressions, frightening instruments, violent prose, blood and entrails everywhere. Beheading, drowning, uh, uh, let's see. Hanging? Yeah, that's what it says. I can't think about these words and images for too long. I need to quickly block them from my mind. I'll go insane if I think about them for long enough. I turn to another series of entries. Come on, there's gonna be some, like, boring-ass, like, I ate cake today. They're all about Maria. Drawings of Maria. Writing about Maria. Thoughts of Maria. 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 Magda kissing Maria. Magda holy Maria. Oh. Well, that part too. Intense and graphic fantasies about her body, her warmth, her kindness. Damn, I... <laughs> yeah, literally. How... How dare she fantasize about Maria? Uh-oh. Desiring a sex head? Oh. Out of the question. That is entirely thoroughly... Oh. Oh no. Lady Amorous, what should I do? The girl I defended, my friend, my best friend, she's... I... I willingly protected a girl like this? A girl who was... Gay? <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> All this time, completely insane. Ah, <sighs> what? What now? I have to tell someone about this. Yes, I need to tell someone. This is an emergency. If I don't do anything, I'll put everyone at risk. Magda might get worse and her insanity might spread to the art sect. Okay. This is just an idea. Sinful thoughts, we move. This is just an idea. I, <laughs> I don't think Neils can do this because they're like literally dying or whatever. But what if there was another assembly? And then at the last second, Niels is like, ha, ah, just kidding. And fucking did something and saved Magda. Ugh. Ugh. A dream. To the art sect. To our dorm. <laughs> She's got sects on her mind. Yeah! Oh my god. Maybe even to me. She'll ruin the haven for good. The community we've worked so hard to protect. I have to stop this. I have to take responsibility for what I did. For wrongly putting my faith in her. I need to put an end to the mess I started. I'll take Magda's diary. I'll find Cerise. I'll get her to tell- <gasps> What if Magda wakes up and fucking kills Grace? Ooh. Oh no. <laughs> and then, and then I'll ask Lady Amorous to hold an emergency assembly tomorrow morning. <laughs> Niels is like, wake up, wake up, wake up, bitch. You bitch, get up, 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 get up. <laughs> Literally, it's another dream. Niels is like, hey, um, I have some bad news for you, buddy. Again, I am frozen, unable to do anything. Again, the dream is about Niels. About Niels. 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 They're standing in the middle of a clearing. No one else is there. Their eyes are filled with anticipation. They're searching for something of their surroundings. Again and again, they look around. Once, twice, three times. The tension in their face relaxes. They huff out a sigh of relief. They run. They run to a place where the clouds loom over the world like an ancient canopy. A place where the sky is always black, aglow with only little pinpricks of starlight. A place where the clouds underneath their feet are outmatched by the majesty of the heavens above. Heavens they alone know. All that waits here is a gate. A twisted, rusting iron gate. A gate that would groan loudly with the slightest provocation. A gate that would alert everything and everyone if it was looked at wrong. Nils walks up to it. Gingerly, they raise their hand to its bars. The gate is opened. By some miracle, no sound is made. 
Niels smirks. Everything seems to be going according to plan. Huh. I knew this would work. No one here would bother to guard this old thing, after all. Why should I expect anything from the others at this point? All they do is lie around without a care, laughing at human misery, egging on stupid wars, forgetting why we even exist in the first place. They push the gate further. It remains eerily silent. Their hand stops. At last, the gate's opening is large enough for them to slip through. Right, this is it then. Time to go. Niels steps forward. They take a deep breath, and for a moment their eyebrows furrow, their head turns to the side on the edge of looking back. They pause, like they're struggling with the thought, like they might never see this place again. They wrench their gaze forward, once more they face the gate. They clench their fists, they dig their heels deep into the cirrus beneath. They steady themselves as they gaze down at what lies beyond the gate, below the lip of the clouds that they stand on. Once they jump off this cliff, their life will change. Ooh, hiccup. They will be branded a traitor, no matter the outcome. They will be shut out of the higher realm forever. This is the point of no return. And yet. And yet they walk forward. They walk until their toes curl over the edge, the edge of their home. They grit their teeth, breathe inwards, mutter to themselves, barely audible. Go. Oh, do it. With a final push, they leap and let their body fall into the unknown. Yeah, bitch! Yeah! Right on to me! Into my arms! <laughs> the dream seems to have ended. Yet, I can't wake up. I can't leave. I can't return to myself. The story must not be over. A dot of light appears. At first it's faint and small, a little star in the emptiness of night. But it grows larger and larger, brighter and brighter. Soon I'm bathed in blinding white light. I have to squeeze my eyes shut. All is silent. And then I hear the wind. My body shakes, air lashes around me, shifting to and fro. The world around me goes cold. Something's changed. My eyes open. I gasp, and my heart jumps into my throat. I am far, far up in the sky. The clouds are rushing past me. I'm falling closer and closer to Earth. I know I'm not actually here, that none of these sensations are real. But even so, the feelings are overwhelming. This dream is no projection. I notice a shadow hanging over me. I look up. And God's like, the fuck, bro? Oh. <gasps> look at them go! Oh! Oh no. I am simping. <laughs> I am simping! Oh, Niels is soaring gracefully over the vast golden expanse of the sky. Large wings stretch out from their back, helping them glide through the air. I never knew Niels had wings like those. They're utterly beautiful. Literally. Literally. Please, Magda. Please fall in love with this bitch. I'm begging you. Untouched. Perhaps even divine. They remind me of a bird I once read about long ago. A tall, elegant bird with pure white feathers, one that no longer existed in the world I lived in. An egret. Neil's wings remind me of an egret. Their serene flight focuses my mind. I take in the world, quickly shrinking in its expanse as I fall. A dangerous end awaits. I grow panicked, scared I'm going to die. But I'm in a dream. None of this is real. None of this is actually happening. I'm perfectly safe. Just asleep. If that's the case, I should be able to slow things down, shouldn't I? So I'll imagine myself as light as a single feather of Neil's, from Neil's back. My descent slows. My body gently rocks back and forth. My stomach calms down. I'm at peace. The sun begins to set in the west setting the sky aflame in streaks of gold and pink. Niels is smiling to himself. I'm not surprised. This is the first sunset they've seen from the view of the world below. I don't know what they're thinking. Maybe they're happy. Maybe they see this beauty as an omen of things to come. Together, the two of us drink in the beauty of the sky. 
Oh my god, it's so romantic. <laughs> Together we descend to Earth. Oh my god. We make a safe landing on a small island, dense with woodland. I lean on a nearby tree. Niels folds their wings behind their back and starts investigating their surroundings. They bring a hand to their chin, deep in thought. Right, I think I can start my work here. If I recall correctly, there aren't many humans on this island. Good thing, too. It'll be easier for me to test out my methods on a smaller population. If I walk around for long enough, I should run into one of them eventually. Maybe even a couple if I'm lucky. Niels stretches, straightens their back, and takes a deep breath. They begin to make their way into the forest, pushing their way through thickets of knotted leaves and branches. Curious, I follow them from behind. A small twinge of discomfort pricks my consciousness. The way they talked earlier, it somehow bothers me. It almost came across as detached, perhaps even unable to understand the people they're trying to help. I didn't expect Niels to think like a human being, but their words, their view of their work, their expression, they were all cold and clinical, clipped and terse like a research sect on study paper. Niels wanders further through the forest. Time passes. Their frustration grows. Their, brows furrow their brow furrows more and more. As we walk, I look around. I find myself recognizing the trees growing here. Some berries I know, unripened in the bushes, some notes of delicate birdsong in the air, ones I'm certain I've heard before. But Niels keeps on changing direction and turning this way and that. Can't figure out why this place looks so familiar. They're muttering to themselves constantly. <sighs> why can't I find anything? Where are the humans? I swear my observations from above were accurate. If I don't find a human soon, it'll all be over. I'll have already been banished. And then, for what? This will be a huge waste of my time, energy, and... Their agonizing is cut short. They stop. Their eyes focus. A smile curls on their lips. I move into a small space beside them. Their gaze is locked onto something in the distance. I look in the deep of the forest, in the direction in which their head is turned, to see what suddenly drew their attention. Huh? They're two members of the Haven. A small foraging group with tools and baskets at the ready. They're digging up some mushrooms from the forest floor, but I don't know their faces. I don't recognize them at all. So they must be old members. In fact, they probably are. The cuts of their uniform are different. Vintage. Styles that haven't been in use, haven't been used in decades. Ah, oh, it all makes sense now. No wonder this place felt familiar. I've lived here my whole life. Niels begins to move forward. They approach the two girls slowly and gracefully like they were approaching timid rabbits. It's obviously they don't want to come across as a threat. Greetings. My name is Niels. Niels bows slowly and deeply. The foragers flinch. They turn around and freeze. Both stare back, wide-eyed. A tense silence follows. One of the two girls lets out a ghastly shriek. As quickly as they can, the two of them drop their foraging rewards and grab their equipment. In a few minutes, all that remains are their footprints smeared across the forest floor in a mad dash to escape. Niels stands still, completely puzzled. Are... are humans normally timid? I wasn't expecting that sort of response. I, on the other hand, saw it coming a mile away. Niels chose to descend on the Haven, a settlement cut off from any and every form of danger. Anything new was a potential threat to our community. Why wouldn't we be afraid of Niels? Even I was shocked when I first saw them. Deep in thought, Niels sits down. They rest their head on their hand, contemplative, yet aware that they had their work cut out for them. All is silent. Suddenly, I hear a rustling from behind. I turn around. Ooh. Another group of Haven girls approaches. Slowly, they inch their way closer and closer towards Niels. Niels doesn't notice their presence. Sweat beads on my brow. In their palms are long, thin tubes. Ooh, no. Long, outdated models. 
but still a familiar sight. They're blow dart pipes, weapons we use to stun and immobilize intruders and traitors. That forager team, they must have warned the community about Niels. Niels! Niels, you need to go! If you don't, then... then the Haven will attack you! Run! Get out of here! Leave! Now! One of the members of the leader of the group raises her hand, three fingers pointed upwards in total silence. Her sharp gaze and high cheekbones are striking. I immediately recognize her. That girl is Lady Amorous. At her signal, the other members of the group bring the thin tubes to their lips. Quietly, Lady Amorous begins to count down. Three. I run to Niels. Two. I try to grab them by the shoulders. One. My hands pass through them. I remember. I can't do anything for Niels. These events had already happened. Lady Amorous's hand drops down. No! My baby! <laughs> Niels is pincushioned by a cascade of rainbow darts. They gasp in pain. As the poison begins to seep into their body, they try to stand up. Once, Maria told me that a dose from one dart could make a normal human unconscious after they took seven steps. That the toxin was you that the toxin we used, distilled from the juice of island berries, was meant to take out a person quickly and effectively. It cut any opportunity for harm mercifully short. Thirty more darts pierce Niels. Holy fuck! Along the length of their spine. Niels finally stands in full. They try to turn around, to see who had just attacked them. But inevitably the toxin overwhelms them. They fall. With soft, with soft thud, a soft thud, Niels crumples, crumples, oh my god, I can read, I swear to god. Niels crumples to the ground, unconscious. My surroundings blur. They drip and streak across my view, paint blending with paint, all melting into a world of unintelligible color. And the world goes dark. And again. Ooh. The rest of Neil's memories are fragmented. Little shart, shards, <laughs> little shards, <laughs> little shards. <laughs> Jeez, brain, come on, work with me here. Good grief, the monkey's paw curls and the Neil's content is delivered. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> little shards of thought glinting in and out of the void, fading in and out of consciousness. In these shards, I'm no longer myself. I'm not human anymore. I am Neil's. I lay on a metal table, paralyzed, in a hazard, in hazard wear and a mask. She's nearly unrecognizable. Lady Amorous herself gazes over my body. Oh. Uh-oh. She probes my flesh with instruments, gives endless commands to the shapeless helpers that stand around her. This is necessary for our future. We need you. Only you can save us from the world. I lay half-conscious, weakly struggling. Her pleas are accompanied by a sharp, stinging pain. I look down to my right. My upper arm has been sliced open. Her sacred hand lifts a surgical knife. Lady Amorous puts down the tool and brings some pins and a pair of tongs into view. Time to get dissected! It's kind of hot, not gonna lie. Um, <laughs> my eyes widen. With those tools, she tacks the skin back. A violent shock runs down my spine. I lurch forward. The forceps reach inwards and start to pull on muscle. Ah, fuck! We're trying to describe torture here, okay? It's too much. <laughs> I pass out. God. Good grief, don't bonk me. I wake up. A dull ache throbs through my body. My chest cavity is held open by an instrument that I've never seen before. Lady Amorous is there again, holding a coil of my intestines. Jesus Christ! <laughs> oh my god! She points to a strange little organ that neither she nor I recognize. Damn, didn't know that was in me. <laughs> With a hum, she takes the surgical knife and cuts a slice. The sting of her blade makes my nerves scream. I bite my tongue so hard it splits. Blood trickles down my chin. Mechanically, Lady Amorous puts the slice in a tube filled with liquid. It's too much. I pass out. I wake up. A searing pain burns through my spine. My body feels strangely light. I turn my head to the side. 
my wings. They're gone. All that's left on my back are two stumps, caked with warm blood. The ligaments, the bone, the feathers, all are neatly arranged on an empty table next to me, removed from my body. Lady Amorous is inspecting a clump of feathers. She's muttering to herself, saddened that tearing apart the pretty limbs was necessary for her work, excited by the possibilities my wingless self presented. I want to puke. It's too much. I pass out. I shot and I missed. I shot and I missed. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. I wake up and pass out again and again and again. My hands and feet are detached and reattached. My chest is opened and shut. Now and then, portholes are installed in my abdomen. Needles are inserted, drawing out fluids. The peaks of my shoulder blades and my spine now house a new set of monstrous wire wings. They bind me, suspend me, attach me to a mysterious machine. I'm not sure what my body is being used for. But in half-lucid listening throughout my checkups, maintenance, and regular procedures, snatches of conversation make their way to me. Once, as another, as yet another needle so snaked its way into a porthole to collect an organ sample, the young girls that carried out the task talked about their recent findings. Apparently, they fed my fluid to some creatures. Sad creatures seemed to resist any and all illness they were exposed to. They'd never seen anything like it before. What's more, my fluid had no taste, no odor, and absolutely no side effects. A single drop was all that was required for it to work miracles. I'm gonna keep the thought I just had in my head to myself, because it's deranged and ill-fitting for <laughs> the tone happening currently. A little later, they talked about a grand deal they were planning. Hey, yo! <laughs> As you should! I'm sorry! A little later, they talked about a grand meal they were planning. Get out of my head. Stop it. A celebratory dinner. You and me thinking the same thing, huh, Cake? We both know. We both know what we mean. <laughs> God. A celebratory dinner between Lady Amorous and all of the sect heads. The food will be rare, delicious, and special. It will be luscious. It will be anointed with the miracle substance in their needles. The substance from my body. It'll be the first human trial of a medicine that could protect their community. Forever. Other girls who refit and replace the wiring don't talk nearly as much as the fluid drawing team. But observing them gives me a sense of the purpose my wires serve. Each time a wire is unplugged for replacement, I feel slightly less tired. I can flex my arms slightly instead of merely twitching a few fingers. My feet can kick weakly versus aimlessly twirling in their sockets. Ooh. Raising my head is no longer a titanic effort. The burst of energy always stops when a new wire is inserted. I grow weak once more. And I notice that the strip of light illuminating the room changes too. The more unplugged I am, the dimmer the lights get. Perhaps my body is serving other purposes. Occasionally, Lady Amorous walks in to see me. She's always silent, always contemplative. As she stares at me, I look to her to avoid her gaze. Oh, fuck. Oh, not the- no, not the eye over the half-lidded- Ugh! I'm simping, I'm simping, I'm a shrimp, I'm- I am shrimping. <laughs> her eyes are always locked onto my body, dissecting it visually, looking for what she can harvest next, what sacred flesh she could put to her use. She hungers to consume me. She's sick, depraved, monstrous, the type of human who'd pull anyone and anything apart if it intrigued her, the type of human to always use others for her gain, whether they knew it or not, the type of human who drove others to madness, to depravity, though she looks for new parts to eat, new organs to harvest, new parts to maim, she can't have all of me. My mind is still free, and she can't take it. But the longer I'm down here, the more my mind changes. Once I get out of here, I hope her people know what kind of things she did. What kind of things she uses. The punishment they'll give her for violating life. The liberation they'll give me. Once I get out of here, I'll leave. Forever. 
These humans don't deserve the help of a higher power. I was kidding earlier when I said loving Niels would fix all diseases, but I'll take that W. <laughs> Once I get out of here, I'll do the humans a favor and kill them all. Yes! Yes! Yes, bitch, let me help! Let me help! Please, 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 Niels, I promise I will be the best follower you have ever had in your life. <laughs> They've lost what made them human to start with. They're just mindless, greedy vermin. <laughs> I would wake up from that in a cold, heated sweat. <laughs> if I ever get out of here, if I ever leave free to go, if I ever see another human, I'll tear them apart. Limb to joint, to fat to heart, to eyes to hair, to bone to nerve, to tongue to muscle to cell, to limb to joint, to fat to heart, to ears to hair, to bone to nerve, to nut, tongue to muscle, to cell to limb, to joint to fat to heart, to limb. Damn it! Okay. Uh huh. <laughs> Everyone is right. Humanity. Oh fuck! My fucking stand yet again is trying to fall down. Can you just? just stay there like we're almost we're almost done for today just relax there's no way you go back to drawing after dreaming this not a chance literally <laughs> no not a chance i should have never left should have never come here should have never tried i'm such an idiot and now i'm gonna die here alone just kidding. Hi. Hi, hello. It's morning. I rub my eyes gently. I push myself up off my mattress and swing my legs over the side of my bed. I ready myself to stand up. But instead of getting up and getting ready, I sit there. My feet dangle passively above the floor. Why did I... Why did Niels make me see that dream? See... Oh, relive their past. They're still so strange to me. Yet, if what I saw was true... It's literally true. You've literally seen the proof. What do you mean, if what you saw was true? Girl, you are so far in denial. I swear to God. Did Lady Amorous really do all that? Our food? Our health? Our power? Was it all from using meals? Does Lady Amorous only use others? What kind of people does... Lady Amorous not like? Who does she punish? Who's insane? Who gets taken away? Why did Jail get... Why did I almost get... No, don't be stupid, Magda. The assemblies don't control us. Lady Amorous has seen insanity. She, she doesn't want to use us. She wants to save us. She wants what's best for us. For me. For everyone here. So that we don't go insane like the people outside. So that we stay safe and peaceful. So that we protect each other. I can trust her to know insanity. Be stupid. Be stupid, Magda. Can't I? Yes, I... I can trust Lady Amorous. I can trust... The Haven. Once I nearly went insane. I nearly was taken for good. But everyone here forgave me. They gave me a second chance. I have to use that opportunity to prove I'm better. To prove that I'm worthy of living in a Lady Amorous's Haven. To prove that insanity can be overcome. So, even if Niels's pain is real, even if Lady Amorous and the others shunned me, even if feeling their body be torn apart over and over again makes my skin crawl and my stomach twist, twist into knots, I have to be good. I have to ignore them. Lady Amorous wanted the best for us all. She bloodied her hands so that we, her world, would never have to. I made a promise to Niels. I know I made one. The vivid dream, those violent thoughts, they tried to reach me several times, but I'm making a decision here and now. Niels! Magda! You are the dumbest bitch on the planet! I can't visit them again. I have to be good. I've caused everyone enough trouble, and I'm gonna be punished for it, although I still don't know how. I take a deep breath and stand up. Yeah, I will be good from now on. All of this was too much. I let myself slip. I can't be tempted into insanity again. Niels is about to make you kill just- Please, I'm begging. I'm begging. As I move about my dorm collecting my things to get ready, I notice that Grace has left her bed. She probably went out early to work on her project. I hope she gets it done soon. Or maybe I overslept. 
Yesterday was exhausting. Just to double check the time, I look at my alarm clock. Oh, it's 6.30 a.m. Thank goodness. It doesn't really bother me that Grace has left yet again, but I sure hope she's taking care of herself what, with all her work nowadays. At any rate, I'll be seeing her tonight. Girl. Not a brain cell. It's cotton up in there. As usual, I brush my teeth in the nearby bathroom and get dressed for the day. I smooth out my dress and tie my hair, hot hair ribbons tight. Today, I'm going to reinvent myself. Start from square one. For that, I absolutely need to look my best. But I soon find my mind wandering to the next event of the day. I wonder what'll be for breakfast. I go through a mental list of the most delicious things the Haven Kitchen has to offer. Maybe it'll be corn muffins with butter, or warm croissants with a side helping of scrambled eggs. Or if I'm lucky... Huh? Was that... The assembly bell? No. No way. I must be hearing things. It's been way too soon since the last assembly. It hasn't even been a week. So there's no way... The bell rings again. My body freezes. Something bad must have happened. Something so bad that Lady Amorous and the sect heads have to, had to intervene. A violent shudder runs through my body. Oh no. No, no, no. Please don't tell me that this is what Eve was. I take a deep breath to recenter myself. No, it's not. It can't be. Even though Lady Amorous and the other heads respect Eve, I don't think they'd take her word alone for granted. Besides, I don't think she has any evidence, right? Yeah. Yeah, I should be safe. This assembly's probably about someone else. I straighten my back and make my way out of the dorm. Anxious thoughts swarm my brain. I push forward, muttering to myself as I go, This isn't about me. This isn't about me. This isn't about me. Outside, I see some other members walk towards the assembly hall. They seem just as confused as I do, and I realize I'm not alone. That relieves me, if only a little. This isn't about me. Mm. Mm. I don't know. Well, whatever happens within this assembly, it is, this isn't about me. Girl, please come to your fucking senses. I'll have the haven to fall back on. I'm still fed and clothed and seen as an essential member of the community. Even if most people don't like me, this isn't about me. Girl, wake up. Please, 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 please have a moment. Please have a moment. Or, or, or Niels, or something. Niels be like, please don't fucking go in there. Are you fucking dumb? Yeah, that's why I love this place. <laughs> this isn't about me. Clueless, literally. In a world filled with insanity, this isn't about me. This is absolutely about me. The Haven is a sanctuary. This isn't about me. I'm fortunate to have been born and raised here. This isn't about me. This is a privilege few have. This isn't about me. Come on, bitch, please. You're gonna get killed. I'm happy that I live here. This isn't about me. No, she fucking went. <laughs> oh, God. When I finally enter the assembly hall, I settle down into a pew, one close to the entrance and far from the stage. I look around. The hall is crowded as always. It's almost exactly like it was a few days ago, but the noise of the crowd is a lot louder than normal. I shake my head gently to release the tension in my face. Yeah. <laughs> Grabbing and shaking Magda like a squeaky toy. Literally. Yeah, the noise makes sense. Everyone's confused. That's why they're all taking talking so much. Girl, have the fucking sense to run. Please, I'm begging. There's a loud cough on the microphone. It squeals ringing throughout the hall and the room goes completely silent. Everyone, your attention, please. I understand that this assembly is unusually timed, that you may be confused or nervous. However, I'd appreciate your attention for the time being. God, they're gonna put you on blast writing RPF in front of the whole hell. But like, for real this time, oh my god. Thank you. Now I suppose you're all wondering why you've been called here at such short notice. As you know, assemblies are not held very often. It is rare to see one follow another in such a short span of time. Especially within the span of a week. Unfortunately, this is sudden and desperate matter. And so, here we are, holding a second assembly. 
this assembly was because was called because of a major breach of trust in our community the trust that we try so hard to cultivate and hold as a value i would like to deal with this <gasps> wait what if it's a plot twist what if it's not about her what if it's about grace because grace read her diary and they didn't even bother to hear her out that's just a wild suggestion i don't think it's true but I would also be really pleasantly surprised because the deliberate wording of a breach of trust was really interesting to me. If it still turns out to be Magda, okay. I'd eat that up. Me too, bitch! That would be such a big brain plot twist. If I do not do this, the issue will almost certainly worsen. People will be harmed. It could even pose a threat to the Haven itself. I shifted my seat. So it's that bad? I, I see. Sweat begins to form on my palms. This isn't about me. So why am I getting nervous? This isn't about me. There are hundreds of people in this hall. All of them could be hiding secrets that could harm the Haven. It could be any one of them. This isn't about me. Besides, this will be over soon. I'm half an hour. In half an hour, I'll go and have breakfast. Then I'll work on my piece in the art sect, like always. They're about to out somebody else. <laughs> Oh, maybe she'll be nice again. It'll be like, this assembly never happened. Just like every other time. This isn't about me. It's not about me. Yeah, it's not about me. There's another cough on the microphone. Before this assembly begins, I must make something apparent to you all. I will not be handling this assembly today. No. The people who brought this issue to me will be the ones in charge. I believe that our community should hold itself to the standards we have set long set for ourselves. It is only fair that we demonstrate that and can make good examples and hold the people we care about, the people we want the best for, fully and truly accountable. And so I wish to summon them to the stage. Their service to the Haven's values will be rewarded. Learn well from them. And with that, Lady Amorous raises her hand in a gesture of invitation. She beckons to a particular slice of the audience before her. I hear the sound of footsteps on wood as three people make their way onto stage. When I see them, my heart plummets into my stomach. There's Cerise, twirling her blonde hair condescendingly. Her face is scrunched up in disgust, eyes darting about for her target. There's Eve. Clicking through a dossier of files filled with tabs and notes, adjusting her glasses as she checks her sources. And right beside her is... 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 No, this can't be right, I'm just seeing things. There's no way she's on stage right now. I rub my eyes, and again, and again. This isn't about me. It shouldn't be. It can't be. But the scene before me doesn't change, no matter how many times I try and rub my eyes. The same girl stands right beside Eve, looking small and deeply ashamed. She looks down at her shoes. Her expression is immensely, terribly sad. It's Grace. Nope, nope, she ratted us out. Never mind. Listen, it would have been a cool plot twist. I can't lie to myself anymore. There's no other explanation for this. This is about me. There's no way it could have been about anyone else. I don't know how Cerise, Eve, and Grace found out what exactly they know about what I did. I'm only certain about one thing alone. I'm the center of this assembly, and this time, Grace won't be there to save me. Bitch, run! Dear Haven, I must stress that I and all others on this stage take no pleasure in punishing our fellow members, regardless of who they are or the nature of their actions. Punishment must always be viewed as a necessity to maintain our safety, not as a means to threaten or harm one another. Without strict consequences for dangerous actions, the Haven would have fallen to the same vices of the out- I don't care! <laughs> This is why the assemblies exist. With that in mind, allow me to explain what we know happened. Three days ago, the member responsible for this breach of trust began her activities, immediately after the previous assembly held this week. The timing alone is highly suspicious. Perhaps the assembly roused her dissatisfaction with the rules we hold here, prompted her to lash out, so to speak. In her irrational desire to strike back at her own community, our perpetrator traveled outside, beyond the permitted boundary. If she had only stepped out briefly, this assembly would have never been held, but she kept on walking. Her journey was so long that it was unlikely to be accidental. No, everyone. It was an intentional 
breach of the haven's boundaries. To further add insult to injury, our perpetrator trespassed into a forbidden zone, one that only the sect heads and Lady Amorous could enter. There, our perpetrator committed an act so taboo that it would have put the entire haven in danger. That is, if we hadn't intervened. And yet, the most terrifying act our perpetrator committed was wishing you were fucking dead, bitch! Was returning a day later, traveling outside, trespassing forbidden zones, committing taboos once again. If she had done it once, we could have forgiven her after severe punishment. Doubt. But our perpetrator's repeated actions have made something abundantly clear. She does not truly love our community. Within her heart, she is hatred for the Haven. Correct. You know what? You got one thing right. I hate this fucking place. Hatred. For the Haven? No, 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 no. What? I'd never... I don't hate the Haven at all. Why the hell would she think that? Without thinking, I stand up. Everyone else stares at me from their pews. No. Eve, I'd never hate the Haven like that. Never. Fist tensed and teeth grit, I squeeze past other people seated in my pew, keeping eyes on the stage. I march my way up to the aisle right in front of Eve. From the audience, the entire haven stares back at me in dead silence. The soundless air is punctured by a few whispers. I don't care. I don't care what they have to say about me. Most of them never liked me to begin with. But even so, my thoughts are my own. I am tired of Eve assuming things about me. Yes! Yes! Even if I am the culprit, why should I sit and let myself take this crap? Eve, I've always loved living here. I was born and raised in the Haven. This is and will always be my home. I love being here. I love making things. I love taking in the endless beauty of our forests. I love the community here, even if most of you don't feel the same way about me. Regardless of whether or not you like me, I wouldn't trade this place for anything. So don't you dare say things about like that about me again, ever. Eve stares at me. Her eyes are wide. She clearly hadn't expected me to shout at her. But then Eve relaxes into a small smile. Her gaze now narrowed an incisive, determined focus, like everything she had wanted had fallen into place. And that's when I know I'm done for. I see. I see. First of all, thank you, Magda. I thought I'd have to drag you onto stage like my previous culprits. But you did the work for me. Thank you. Everyone, Magda did something in service of the Haven for once. Let's give her a hand, shall we? I would kill her! Barehanded! <laughs> the whole audience bursts into raucous, rac I don't know how to say that word. I've seen it a million times. I, I don't know how to say it. Sarcastic applause. They sense a bloodbath blood incoming. I try to ignore it. All right, all right. That's enough. Eve waves a hand to quiet everyone looking onward. Him. Forgive my sudden excitement. Now, Magda, you spoke passionately to some of the more weak-minded members of our audience. You might have even convinced them that you were a good person. But you know what I think? Every word out of your math, math, your math, <laughs> the mouth is a poisonous lie. If you truly felt fortunate to be a member of the Haven, you should have known that the boundaries outside are for our safety. You knew you were trespassing them. So tell me, why did you enter that forbidden zone twice? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, no need to answer me. I already know. You knew what you were doing, Magda. You just didn't care about your community. Ugh, damn it. I knew she'd put pins in my outburst as soon as she heard it. I guess I should have expected that. We're four hours into stream, words get a little weird. I want to stop, but like, I'm really compelled right now. This would be a terrible time to stop. I absolutely refuse. But you know, Magda, your little adventures aren't the only reason you're here today. I'm sure everyone's curious about that other thing you did to hurt your own community. Something someone who felt fortunate to be here would never dream of doing. So, if you really love the Haven Magda, why would you pick up the pen again? Let alone write things that could have hurt us all. The audience begins to whisper frantically, What? What's she talking about? I've never made any work like that, unless... Ahem. I suppose now's a good time to pass the baton to our second investigator. Cerise, if you'd like to come out with the other piece of evidence. Eve gestures to Cerise, who stands further back on stage. Cerise nods and step forward, steps forward. Whole game in one stream? I don't know, man. I don't know how long this game is. If they dart her and she passes out, I'll stop there. <laughs> 
there's something in her hands. I can't see what. As she makes her way towards me, she flashes a wicked smirk. My stomach drops. Within the next few minutes, I know I will be humiliated in front of the entire haven. By this point, the audience's whispers have turned into loud conversation once more. They hum with excitement, fear, and anger. All right, everyone. I know you're all excited about what's coming next. Believe me, I feel the same way. But please, all eyes on me. The audience quiets down and hundreds of gays focus on Cerise. Can she snap already? I'm begging Magda to have a moment, a crumb, a crumb. Please, Niels, do something. Push this bitch over the edge. God. Now that I have your attention, want to see what the liability got up to in private while we weren't looking, huh? The audience gives a loud rocket, that thing, roar of enthusiasm. A few whoops and cheers pierce the air. Allow me to show you the ultimate proof that this girl's a threat. In one swift gesture, Cerise whips out something from behind her back. With a look of triumph, she dangles it of the crowd for all to see. That something, that something is... Ah. <laughs> how the hell did she, how the hell did they, how the hell did they all get their hands on my diary? That's personal. They can't. No, no. I don't like looking through other people's stuff at the best of times. But man, oh man, this was a special exception. Take a good look, everyone. See for yourself how fucking disgusting she is. And with that, Cerise flings my diary into the crowd. Uh-oh. The audience goes into an uproar. A girl catches the book mid-flight and yanks it down to earth. The other girls swarm around her like horse flies to flesh and watch as she begins to turn the pages. They want to see what's inside. They want to know the sinful things I've written and drawn. They want to gawk at my innermost thoughts and parade them around the island. How ironic that these dangerous things were now okay to look at. But in the name of justice for the Haven, I guess anything went. Even if seeing, reading, or learning about the things I wrote normally warranted harsh punishment. I have to pry it out of their hands. I have to run up and get it in the middle of that crowd and take it back. I have to. I rush forward. Cerise jerks me back, putting me into a headlock. I struggle. I kick against her. I punch her. I have to get out. I need to get out. Please get me out. But Cerise's grip is a powerful vice. She sneers and wrenches the side of my head upwards, putting her face against it. I can feel her hot breath against my skin. Not so fast, pervert. I saw everything. What you wrote. What you drew. You really think you're untouchable, don't you? That you can get away with what you said about me and Eve? You can reduce poor sweet Maria to your gross fairy- Oh. To your gross fantasy? I can't let someone like you do whatever the hell you want. Me and Eve, we took the time out of our busy schedules to help you. To get you back to normal again. All those punishments, those conversations, those encounters, all gone to waste on you. A disgusting, degenerate freak. I want her to shut up. I want her to loosen her death grip, latch tight on my neck. I want her to stop squeezing my throat shut with her o oafish hands. But I can't. I can't even fight to breathe properly because I'm listening to the crowd. Because I can't stop hearing what everyone else is saying about me. Yikes, I didn't know she wrote that gross shit about Maria. Maria of all people. How dare she make girls like us look bad, pursuing her forbidden desire for a head? How dare she? Psh, I was right not to associate her back when she was in the writing sect. I never liked what she put out. She's just sad Cerise is more successful than her now. That's why she's taking it out on everyone else. Bitch, hello? Stop guilt tripping us. There's a reason you've had it hard since the last assembly. God, look at this freaking mess of a rant over here. She wants to be the victim so badly. We get it, you're a harmful weirdo that could make us insane, but it's totally our fault that we don't want to be seen around you, sure. I... I knew that most people gave me a wide berth, that nobody wanted me... wanted to be around me anymore, but... Hearing it in the open? Hearing everyone say such things about me? Out loud? I... I don't know. I don't know what's real anymore. My mind feels like it's peeling from my body. I want to float away, away from here at least. Order, order, silence at once. This assembly is concluded. Are we in agreement? Indeed. God, there's beat. <laughs> oh God, they're beating her ass in the quote retweet. <laughs> no. Yep, all the evidence is here. Cerise lets go of me and heads over to Lady Amorous. I collapse on the floor in a heap. I gasp. Slowly, I sit up and rub my aching, crushed neck. And Grace, you haven't said a word this entire assembly. Would you like to share anything else? You were a great help in bringing this all to light. 
Grace looks up from the floor. Her expression is completely unreadable. I can't tell what she thinks of me now. I... Lady Amorous, if you'd let me speak for Grace. She's still not comfortable talking about this. Grace discovered Magda's diary. When called to take a stand for the Haven, she rose to the occasion. Her vital contribution helped us build our case. To let our assembly speak for itself. I go cold. I knew Grace wouldn't be there to protect me. Deep down, I knew that as soon as I saw her standing to try me. But hearing it confirmed in Eve's very own words, <laughs> then, then there really is nothing left for me on this island. I see. Very well. In that case, I hereby declare that Magda is no longer a member of the Haven. Oof. Hiccups. She's taken advantage of our community's generosity. She's sought to poison us and make us insane. And though she nearly made us change our ways, she proved that the insane will always stay insane. Thus, she will be cast outside the Haven so that she no longer poses a harm to our community. Can't take this anymore. I need to get out of here. I need to leave now. I can't be taken away. I won't. I have to go. I have to go. I have to go. I have to go. I stand up. I dash for the exit. But as I rush forward, a wall of uniformed girls and women blocks my path. I'm caught again. The audience surrounds me, full of punishing intent. Countless hands reach out and push me down, forcing me to the ground. They pin me as I punch and kick and scream, struggling against the crushing weight. Feet kick at my body. Hands swat and slap and punch. Voices scream and yell and curse. I have to try to escape, even if the odds are slim, even if the odds of winning are near to none. I have to leave. I have to go. But eventually, my body gives in to their abuse. Helplessly, I lay on the floor, waiting for the inevitable to draw near. Footsteps grow louder and louder. The crowd parts. Cerise and Eve and Grace all come down to gaze at me. Cerise with disgust, Eve with clinical repro reproach, Grace with muted sadness. Lady Amaris is also there, cold as ever. Eve bends down. A little dart is in her hand, just like the one that was used on jail. There's no pipe to fire it. It's just wielded on its own, like a pen or a needle. With one swift motion, she stabs it into my neck. My body starts. I try to struggle again, try to lift myself off the floor despite my new aches and bruises. The chemicals seep into my blood, my heart, my brain, everything starts to go black. And slowly everyone leaves. The crowd draws back. Eve walks away. Cerise leaves me, leaves me a good kick and some spit as a parting gift. Grace is the last to remain. She continues to stand over me. I can feel the sadness oozing out of her pitiful expression. I want her to fucking go. Before the darkness swallows me, the last thing I see are her lips. Her rounding out two little words will be my final memory as a member of the Haven. I'm sorry. I hope I get to kill you. <laughs> you know what? Stitches, or snitches do get stitches. I'm just gonna say that. I fall unconscious. No, I don't want to stop reading! <laughs> no, I don't want to! No, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to. Oh, but we must. I have to go eat dinner. Oh, <laughs> fuck. I have to go eat dinner. It's been four hours. I know I said it. I know I did. I'm st <laughs> This is so good. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. Fuck. This is going to be so hard not to play again tonight. Mm. Okay, 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 okay. We're gonna end it here, and we're gonna start back up tomorrow at the same time, 3 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. I wanna save. Okay, all right. <sighs> My God. So I didn't realize I had the Twitch stream run alongside mobile Discord. <laughs> I missed this. Yeah, this is so good. Oh my god, this is. I mean, I was excited for this game, and I knew it was probably gonna be really good. But this is so fucking awesome so far. I'm so excited. Oh my gosh, oh, it's been a good four hours. Hate to be bound to such mortal necessities like eating. I know, disgusting. Ugh. Okay, all right. <sighs> Before we go, let's see if anybody else is streaming so I can send you guys over there. Um, I don't think so. Again, I, sh I stream at like the one time of day that like nobody... Oh, wait, no, Monica. Yes, Monica is streaming. All right, I'm going to send you guys to Monica. She's a sweetheart. Love her to bits. 
Um, da, da, da. Okay. <clears throat> Phoebe was earlier. Yeah, I don't, I don't see them in the list now. So yeah, I think Phoebe hopped off. But still, oh my gosh, great stream. Awesome stream. Love the game. Love you guys. I will see you all tomorrow. Remember, 3 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, Arizona time, just in case. I don't know what the time zones are all doing right now, but I don't observe daylight savings time, so keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, I love you guys, and take care, and have fun at Monica's. Bye!